points, six points he scored the game. Let's go forward to our keys to the game here, presented by State Farm Major Michael Travers, a good proven winner when it comes to insurance. They score big with their policyholders. First big key tonight for Sky City is going to be rebounding. I think they have to do a better job of rebounding against Cimarron. Second key is, I think, attack Cimarron and get to the foul line. Officials Whitney Blevins, J.W. Finn, Corey Williams here. Scott City in their home white tops with the dark blue numbers, the letters, and light of blue trim. Hugadon wins the toss. They're in the Columbia blue tops with the dark blue numbers, the letters, and the white trim. Lady Beavers open up in a man-to-man -man defense. Here's a screen, Jana Wilson, and now with it is Janae Fugit, guarded by Erica Felker. Entry feed deflected. Lewis picked up, though, deflected again. And this time, Avery Lewis gets the steal and already an early turnover for Cimarron. First possession for the Lady Beavers, seven and a half to go first quarter. Five post, and now here's Kendall Gentry now to Trout. One dribble, nine's a cutter. Kendall Gentry in the paint. Her bank shot too strong. Rebound into the hands of Cimarron, and here they are on the run. With it is Tegan Eskimen. Transition the layup by Wilson. No, but the rebound follow up. No, and that'll be into Cheyenne Kramer for the board. We've played 40 or 50 seconds and no score. The both teams empty-handed. Avery Lewis with a straightaway three, but short right in the hands of Eskimo. He has a couple boards for Cimarron. Seven minutes here in this first quarter. No score. And Cimarron with their second possession. Lady Beavers 0-2 to begin this game, as is Cimarron. Nice cut for Burkhart. And Burkhart kicks it out high to... Eskim, he'll drive in on Gentry, almost swiped at it by Gentry, and now here's a three on the way. Good. That's for Burkhart, just her second three of the year, and Cimarron leads it three to nothing with 6.35 to go here in the first quarter. Cimarron uh, just 22% from three here this year, but they have the early three-point lead. Scott City at 23% as a team. Avery Lewis right side looking for a cutter, finds Megan Trout up top as Cimarron goes man-to-man -man right side to Erica Felker. Trying to get the give and go, but that was denied by Eskim. Nice cut here. Gentry gets almost held now that she gets pushed. And that'll be the first team foul on Cimarron. That'll be on Janae Fugit. And that is her first foul with 6-11 to go first quarter. Cimarron with the early lead at 3 to nothing. As the Lady Beavers will run four out high and then set up their is there in their inbounds. They get it into Kramer, right corner to Felker, steps back, turns down the three. Nice cut for Lewis, goes up and she is fouled. She'll get two free throws. And a good job by Scott City attacking there. Two fouls on the Blue Jays here in the opening period with 6.07 to go. That's on Madeline Burkhart, her first. Two free throws for Avery Lewis where she is 78% on the year. And Scott City's on the board down 3-1. to one. With 6.07 to go here in the first quarter. Second charity toss coming up. It is short. Rebound. Hustled down by Megan Trout, but poked out of bounds by Cimarron. Good job by Trout tracking that down. Lady Beavers have another crack at it here down two. 6.05 here. Lewis had 12 points in the last meeting. Nice position by Trout. Goes up. Oh, she can't get it to go. And the rebound goes to Eskim for Cimarron. And now it's loose. Still loose, but picked up. And going to get a push on Avery Lewis. And that'll be her first. Oh, man. That one was just a missed bunny right underneath by Trout who has had 11 in the first meeting and has back-to-back 18-point -back games for the Lady Beavers, who trail 3-1. to one. We're two minutes in. With it is Cimarron up top. Going to the right is Eskim. Up top, here's a screen for Wilson. She'll drive right down, then loses it, but had it stripped. It picks it back up, needs help, and then she saves it to Morgan Eskim. Now with it, turn around. Here's a three on the way. She crawls off that time by Tegan Eskim, but another offensive rebound for Cimarron Burkhart with it on the long miss. And... Whistle, Cimarron will go out of bounds. That'll be their second turnover. Still at 3-1 for the Blue Jays. 5.31 to go first quarter of play. Looks like they've got a chili feed going on out in the commons area. Lady Beavers, oh, their first three from the floor. Cimarron, one of their first four. That was a three by Burkhart. Out high to Erica Felker, works around to Kendall Gentry. Out high left, left corner to Avery Lewis. Into trap, but deflected and still loose. And players hit the deck, and that'll be, whoa, I think that should be last touch by Cimarron. Okay, good correction there by the officials. 5-12 to go first quarter. It was a tough one. It went off of Morgan Eskim last as her and Kramer were fighting for the ball. Eskim kind of twisted there and heard a loud thud, but she's okay. 
Felker with it, gets a screen, pulls, drives, trying to drive in, and that's going to be, oh, a blocking foul with 5.04 to go first quarter. And that'll be on Morgan Eskim, her first. And already Cimarron's third foul. Mackenzie Metzger's going to check in here. I think she's going to be in for Gentry, if I'm not mistaken. Nope, Cheyenne Kramer. So 3-1 still here with 5.04 here in the opening quarter. Felker to trigger it in. Trying to find a cutter. We'll throw it up top to Kendall Gentry. Now Avery Lewis at the foul line for the tie. Banked off no. And the rebound goes to Janae Fugit for Cimarron. Scott City continues their cold shooting. Now at 0 of 4 from the field. Down by 2 of 4.50 to work here in the opening stanza. Right side driving in. Here's Burkhart, and she draws a foul. Already two fouls on Scott City this quarter. Here with 4.50 to work. That's on Erica Felker, her first. Lady Blue Jays are triggering in Ernie throw Basco. They do right wing ball fake, and that's going to be a travel on Janae Fugit. She shuffled the feet. Uh, turnover number three on the Beaver or on the Blue Jays. Lady Beaver ball here. Still three to one. We've been stuck there for about a minute and a half here. So we're down to the 445 mark of the opening quarter. Felker brings it left to right up top to Kendall Gentry around the nose of the power beaver on the court. Erica Felker up top to Gentry and working around to Mackenzie Metzger. Holds it. Now we'll go left to Erica Felker, short corner. Avery Lewis trying to get into Trout, but double teamed that time is Trout, and Scott City commits their first turnover of the night. Now we're going to double Trout. Looks like Cimarron is. Scott City's going to have to be aggressive with the guards and attack that on their own and create something. Right side to take an Eskim underneath, backing away into Burkhardt and I off the glass. No, Trout, or Craig, yeah, Trout with that last touch by Morgan Eskim, who goes up a couple of rows of stairs that belong to Scott City and back or in for the first time. Pulling double duty here in this game tonight is Kaylee Felker, the 5'6 sophomore. She sang, she sang the national anthem and now checks in and replaces Megan Trout. Also Kendall Gentry out. And in is Chris Irvin as well for the first time, the 5'5 sophomore. With the midway mark of the first quarter, still 3-1 to one for Semron. Bounce pass to Felker. That's Kaylee Felker to Erica Felker. Left corner trying to drive in. Her runner is good and the line drived in on a first shot attempt. We're tied at three with 3.48 to go first period of play. So Scott said with the last three points and they get their first field goal. Now one of five from the field. Lady Beavers in a man-to-man -man defense with it. Morgan Eskim at the foul line goes right side to Tegan. She'll drive the right block guarded by Irvin. Tough shot, no. Backside board to Erica Felker. And Erica wants to push it across here with 3.28 to go. First quarter, a little stop and go, but cut off on the right side by Tegan Eskim up top to McKenzie Metzger. Goes out high left to Chris Irvin. Now elbow left to Kaylee Felker. Right corner, Erica Felker. Erica now in to Kaylee Felker. Throws back up to Avery Lewis. Launches a three for the lead. Yes, it's nothing but nets. Her 7-3 of the year gives Scott City the first lead of the night, 6-3, as we approach the three-minute mark of the first quarter. And that'll be big if Scott City can get some outside shots and maybe loosen things up underneath and open some things up for the Lady Beavers down low. Driving in, here's Wilson right side. Here's an answer back three, Janae Fugit. That one that rimmed in and out. Rebound, last touched. I think that'll be by, oh, ripped away by Mackenzie Metzger. She hustles for the ball. That's probably good because I thought maybe that would be his last touch by Scott City if it had gone out of bounds. So Scott City's hit their last two field goals. Left baseline, here's Avery Lewis. She'll drive in out high to Erica Felker. Now to Chris Irvin, drives the right baseline. Now gets it ripped right out of her hands and then loose. Still loose, picked up by Kaylee Felker, who put it higher off the glass and down. Off the loose ball, 8-3 with 2.23 to go first quarter. Lady Beavers with an 8-0 run. Cimarron has not scored in over four minutes. And Scott City with a five-point edge is walking it across. Are the Lady Blue Jays with 2-10 to go first quarter. Tegan Eskam with it now is Jana Wilson. And Cimarron is yet to sub, but they have one to check in loose. But picked up by Janae Fugit here as we get to the two-minute mark. She's guarded by Erica Felker. Now here's Wilson driving the right side. She runs out of real estate, but is bailed out on a blocking foul. McKenzie Metzger, her first, and the team's third. Eight three for Scott City, minute 59 to go. Megan Trout back in, replace Avery Lewis. In for Cimarron for the first time is Kaylee Beeler. Beeler, a 5'8 senior, and leverage is less than a point per game. Inbound in, they get it to Beeler. The left block guarded by Kaylee Felker. Back out left wing, goes to Janae Fugit. 
And then she hits the deck, and that's going to be Cimarron's fourth turnover. With a minute 53 here in the first quarter, Scott City with the last eight points of the game and a five-point lead at 8-3. to three. Cimarron's going to pick up the Lady Beavers in man-to-man. -man. They set a screen here off the inbounds. They do get it into Erica Felker. Felker, oh, may have almost walked with it. Now here's Trout to Irvin into the front court left with a minute 45. She picks up the pivot foot and travels her second turnover. Got the momentum uh, going downhill a little bit too much, but back to Cimarron, good idea, though. Minute 40 here in the first, still at 8-3 for Scott City. They've scored the last eight points of the ball game. Cimarron on a five-minute drought, and that drought is going to continue. Oh, Amy Felker could not believe it. They said, an official said Trout stepped on the base or the sideline in the corner, and Amy's like, ah, it tells the other fish, oh, it was that close. But got to love the effort there, and it's still going to stay with Cimarron, so no exchange of possession with 92 first quarter seconds remaining. Tegan Eskim up top. Here's Janae Fuga goes left wing to Jana Wilson. Wilson will dribble. And now left side over to Fugit. Entry feed at the left block and losing and picking back up is Beeler. And now to Fugit looking to drive and almost walked with it again. Now here's Tegan Eskim. She'll drive left side. Her runner, no. A lot of contact and the rebound backside to Megan Trout for Sky City. Her second board. Five minute drought continues here. Five and a half minute drought for Simron. Now Mackenzie Metzger up top almost walked with it. Felker right corner. That's Erica for a triple. Yes, that is nothing but net. Her 16th three and it's a 11 to three. Beaver lead with 55 seconds to go. Here here in the first, Scott City with the last 11 of the ball game and five for the 5'6 senior. And now Irvin pokes it up top and gets a steal. Fifth turnover, lead pass. Irvin with it, bounce pass, lead pass. To Erica Felker goes up and she is fouled. And she'll get two free throws. Will Erica with 42.8 to go here in the first. That is the fourth team foul on Cimarron in the quarter. That's on Bailey Beeler, her first. Erica to the line where she is 62% on the year. Scott City 1-2 here in this first quarter, leading it 11-3 and 12-3. 42.8 to go. And this is a Cimarron team that's 2-9 on the year, made it to the sub-state championship game a year ago. That Felker free throw, no, and the rebound to Jana Wilson. Cimarron with a 6-5 edge on the glass. Scott City's done a better job rebounding here in this first quarter against Cimarron. As they lead by nine, as we're at the final 30 seconds of the first quarter. And almost a steal by Irvin up top. And, or correction, that's Metzger and a whistle. And Coach Austin Stebbins is going to call a timeout here with 25.9 here in the first. So good hustle on defense by the Lady Beavers here. Basketball presented tonight by American Implement, b &H Paving, Burlet Green, Beavertown, FFL, Beef Belt. Also a burning... Uh, Farms, Brickover Cattle Company, Shells, Flyers, The Moore, Clint's Diesel Repair, Decal Bayer, Farm Bureau Financial Services, Hugh, and Berta Benz, Fairley Companies, First National Bank, and also Farm Bureau Financial Services, and Neil Baker. It's a 12-0 run for Scott City here. Late in the first quarter. As uh, we are down to 25.9, it'll be Blue Jay basketball out of the 30-second break. With it up top now is Tegan Eskim with 20 seconds to go guarded tightly by Chris Irvin and then stripped by Irvin in a turnover. The sixth turnover, Irvin loses a bit, picks it back up, throws it up and then draws, the, oh, they're gonna call a double dribble on that, but good effort nonetheless. Turnover number three on Scott City. It's Kendall Gentry back in for Erica Felker. Get here, a little bit of a rest with uh, 15 seconds to go first quarter and then you get the minute break in between. So about a minute 15. Cimarron to bring it across, 10 seconds right to left in the hands of Jana Wilson, the senior, goes to her right, guarded by Metzger all the way. Her layup, no, and she'll get two free throws with four seconds to go in the first quarter. That foul on McKenzie Metzger, that is her second. Two free throws here for Jana Wilson, who's 66% on the year, and that one rimming in and out. And Cimarron still six and a half minutes without a point as Cheyenne Kramer will replace Metzger. Second charity toss coming up. 
And that is crawling off as well. Rebounded by Trout. Two seconds and then knocked out with 1.2 to go first quarter. So Scott City has another crack at it here as they lead it 12 to 3. Irvin didn't bound it. Here's Kramer right corner open for three launches. It. Ah, she rushed it a little too much, but a good idea. And we're eight minutes in here in the first quarter. Scott City 12, Cimarron three. We'll come back with the second quarter in a minute. This is Scott City Beaver basketball. Ball. BBN is brought to you by HRC Feed Yards, JNR, Next Tech Wireless, Red Barn Enterprises. SNT Communications, Scott County Hospital, Scott Co-op, Security State Bank, Turner Sheet Metal. Faro Heating and Cooling of Scott City is a proud sponsor of Beaver Activities. Brent and Angie take pride in helping our activities and support our students 100%. They can also help you with any heating and cooling needs that you have. Give Faro Heating and Cooling a call at 620-872-3508 and see if they can help you with your needs today. Online to buylewis.com where you always get it for less. Scott City shooting 44%. Cimarron at just 16 or 13% in that first quarter. At one of eight, Lady Beavers four of nine as they have the 12-3 lead in the ball to begin the second quarter. Glad to have you back. Cimarron scored the first three points of the game on a three-pointer. They're loaned points by Madeline Burkhardt. Scott City scored the last 12. Erica Felker had six of those. Avery Lewis with four, and then Kaylee Felker with the other two. Avery Lewis out high to and we're working around to Erica Felker, Kendall Ginger, left corner to Avery Lewis. Cimarron goes to his own, skip it out high to Felker. Now we get into Trout, who's immediately double team. Kendall Gentry up top, left side three. Yes! Her first three of the night and her 10th of the year, and it's 15 3 with 7.37 to go first half. As the Lady Beavers have hit three triples in this first half, they're now three of five from downtown. As they stay man to man, now Burkhart gets it stripped right out of her hands. That's the seventh turnover to Cheyenne Kramer with the theft. Here's Kendall Gentry, lays it up, no. Hopefully she didn't tweak her ankle too bad. And here comes Janae Fuga back the other way for Cimarron in transition. Shot up, no, too strong for Eskim. That's Morgan Eskim. And that'll be last touch, they'll say, by Scott City. It'll be Cimarron Blue Jay basketball with 7-11 to go first half. Lady Beavers. With a 15-3 lead, they've scored the last 15 of the ball game. Cimarron has not scored in the last almost seven and a half minutes. They set up a double screen, and then here's a three on the way, and that is good for Tegan Eskam. Her 12th three of the year, 15-6 with 7.04 to go first half. And Cimarron's field goals here in the first nine minutes of the game are from downtown. Lead pass in the front court to Avery Lewis. Now back to Kendall Gentry holds it. Uh, here's Avery Lewis. Lewis holds it, finds Trout at the foul line. Faces up, drives to her right. She'll try to take this one on the way. Her runner wide to left, and the rebound goes to Madeline Burkhardt. Already her third rebound. 6.40 to go second quarter at the left block it goes. Now up top to Tegan Eskim from Morgan Eskim. Eskim goes right side. Here's a Burkhart three. Good. And Cimarron with back-to-back -back threes. Burkhart has six, including two threes. And it's 15-9 with 6.28 to go here in the first half. As they have scored the last six points all in threes. They, three field goals all from downtown in this first half. And Burkhart has hit both of her threes. Just a little outside of eight minutes apart. Here's Kendall Gentry with it. Cut, Megan Trout, nice cut in the layup. That time it's good. Her first basket assist, Kendall Gentry, 17-9 with 6.05 to go first half. And that'll break the 6.0 Cimarron Blue Jay run. We're two minutes into this second quarter play, and now Wilson will tee up a three left side. That one's a little strong and out of bounds. Saved into play. Here's Avery Lewis trying to drive left sideline, and she gets fouled. Lewis with the first rebound. That'll be on Janae Fugit. That's her second foul. And first foul of the quarter. And Coach, has, or Coach Stebbins, excuse me, will send in Kinley Frank, a 5-4 sophomore, who had one point last time against Scott City in their first meeting in December. Inbound in now to Avery Lewis from Erica Felker, who now has it up top of 5.45 to go first half. Right 
outside Kendall Gentry. Gentry holds it at the top. It goes to Erica Felker, drives to her left around the perimeter, gets a screen, give and go to Avery Lewis. Now the lob it into Trout, holds it, hands it back. Now left side, here's Erica Felker looking to drive in. Five and a half, good position by Trout. She goes to her right, her layup, no. Rebound tipped and still loose, but picked up by Cimarron's Tegan Eskim. Here come the Blue Jays down the four, down eight. And that pass sails a little too high and into a pond of Scott City cheerleaders and turnover number eight on the Blue Jays. Five nineteen here in the first half. Six for Simron in this quarter, five for Scott City, but the Lady Beavers have an eight-point lead. They have led by a dozen. Here's Erica Felker at the top, goes to the right immediately. Now she'll drive in, pull up mid-post right, leaves it off to the right. And another rebound for Tegan Esk, and that's already her fifth. As she'll push in transition, and then catching it, and then falling back is Morgan Eskim. And that'll be turnover number nine on Simron. That was a great catch by Morgan Eskim. She had the two feet. She had the... Full possession. That would have been a clean catch if it were football, but this is basketball. And she would have been down in the red zone there. 4.55 to go first half. Felker with it up top. She'll go to her left. Simron plays pretty scrappy defense. And now Avery Lewis for her second three. No, rebound there is Kramer with the putback. She'll get the Windex out and put up her first basket. And Scott City back up by 10 with 4.38 to go first half and now 19-9. So Scott City is building up a 10-point lead, four and a half to go first half. They've led by as many as 12, taking Eskim. Now here's driving in Wilson, almost double dribbled pass, right corner, here's a three. Rimming off, rebound loose in the paint, but picked up by Cimarron, and they'll have another crack at it. That's taking Eskim. That was put up by Kinley Frank on the right side. Now out high, Wilson will launch a three. No, off the back yard, rebound tipped by Kendall Gentry, and then she'll end up getting it herself. Wilson's not a big three-point shooter, She's only hit one this year. As we're at the midway mark of this second quarter from way downtown, no, that time for Kendall Gentry. And then Cimarron can't keep it alive and it'll stay Scott City's ball with 3.56 to go first half. Kendall was from beyond college range on that one. That would have been pretty nice that she could have hit that in and given Scott City a large lead. Into Trout goes up, can't get it to go, but she's fouled, she'll get two free throws. And that'll be team foul number two on Simron here in the second quarter with 3.55 to go first half. The foul will be charged to Madeline Burkhart, and that is her second. Her and Janae Fugut each with two fouls. And two free throws for Megan Trout, who has just two points coming in this quarter, but her first trip to the line tonight. Free throw is crawling in, and... She extends the lead to 11 for Scott City, 20 to nine with 3.55 to go first half. Kaylee Felker, Chris Irvin, and Cheyenne Kramer, and Kendall Gentry exit. Also out is for Cimarron is Burkhart. Second free throw, no. Rebound Cimarron in the hands of Bailey Beeler who just re-entered the ball game. So Scott sitting out three of six at the line. Cimarron 0 of two here. We're at the 345 mark of the second quarter and 11 point Lady Beaver lead. Nice give and go. Bounce pass goes up. Hitting underneath the backboard is Tegan Eskim and Chris Irving comes out of there with a rebound for Scott City. In transition down to Avery Lewis. She tracks it down in time. And now back here is Chris Irvin. Avery Lewis right corner. She'll try the three. She'll bury the three. She has two threes and she has seven and it's a 14 point game and a 8-0 run. 23-9 with 3.20 to go first quarter. The fourth Lady Beaver three of the half and a steal on the other end and a layup for Felker and one. 25-9 with 3.17 to go first half. So Felker with the steal. And that's on Tegan Eskim, her first, off the Cimarron turnover, her 10th. Felker with eight and a half. She had just three in the first meeting in December. That foul was on mention, Tegan Eskim. Kinley Frank checks out. Free throw for Erica, no. The rebound, Kaylee Felker does rip it away and then tries, to, and she does get it to Erica Felker. Up top, Scott sitting with an opportunity for a four-point trip, but it goes off the hands of Avery Lewis, and that'll be turnover number four. Well, Kaylee Felker with that offensive board there. Three minutes to go first half. Scott City with a 16-point lead on a 10-0 run. Cimarron on a three-and-a-half-minute scoring drought. Right side with it is Bailey Beeler almost thrown away and now into the hands of Brady Burkhart, and that'll be thrown away. She is a 5'10 freshman, and Cimarron commits turnover number 11. Turnovers have been big for Cimarron this year. They average 23 a game, and they're already at 11 here 
as we're pushing toward the late moments of the second quarter. Lady Beavers have built up a 16-point lead. Chris Irvin wanted to penetrate. Now, cross-court pass. Good defense by Tegan Eskam. I tell you what, she's going to be a terror for a lot of teams in the league for the next couple of years, and she's already been aggressive here this year as a sophomore. She's given Scott City fits. She does have a three-pointer tonight. Had six in the first meeting. Here's Erica Felker lob underneath. Too high for Megan Trout, and Scott City turns it over for the fifth time this half as Kendall Gentry and also Cheyenne Kramer enter. Out will be Avery Lewis and also Megan Trout. Timeout on the floor taken by Cimarron. We'll take it as well with 2.38 to go. Second quarter, 25-9 Scott City. Back in a minute, this is Beaver Basketball. Basketball. done with excellence. Five nine Scott City with the lead. Summer on the ball. Two and a half to go first half here in Scott City. Glad to have you back here. We're also on the Beaver Broadcasting Network. Here on Mix 94.5. Right side here with it is Burkhart. And underneath to Eskim, who can't get it. That's Morgan Eskim, and then ripped away by Chris Irvin for the board. Cimarron has not had a two-point basket yet. Erica Felker weaving away through. May got pushed to the back. No foul call, but the saved in a play by Kaylee Felker after the Erica Felker miss in Scott City six turnover the half. Here's Cimarron with the ball. Two minutes to go first half with it as Tegan Eskim drives in. Her layup is going to bounce in. Tegan Eskim with five, and it's 25-11 with 1.56 to go first half. That'll break a nearly four and a half minute drought for the Cimarron Lady Blue Jays and a 10 -0 Scott City run. Kaylee Felker with it, pivots, finds it left side to Cheyenne Kramer. She'll try a three from the left wing, too strong, and wide right in the rebound to Jana Wilson. Scott City did not hit a three on Tuesday night, already has four in the first half and driving in Wilson. Ooh. That might have been a carry on Jana Wilson. Officials don't call it. Instead, they call a foul on Scott City. That foul charged to Chris Irvin at first, but that's Scott City's first foul of the second quarter with 1.37 to go first half. Jana Wilson to the line uh, for the Lady Blue Jays, who's trying to get a first point of the night, and she will. She had 12 in the first meeting, 25-12, 1.37 to go first half. As in is going to be Kinsey Jantz for the first time, a 5'8 junior. She'll replace Morgan Eskim. And second free throw pending here. This is the fourth game of five in this gym today. Free throw off to left. Rebound, Cheyenne Kramer does a good job of keeping the pivot foot down and then now lets it right. 90 seconds to go first half with it is whew, Kendall Gentry and then she's fouled by Jana Wilson. That is her first. Cimarron's third of the quarter. Little too tight a defense out high with a minute 28 to go first half. Yeah, they had the middle eighth grade A and B teams in here beginning at 2 o'clock this afternoon against Cimarron. Got the middle school kids out to come watch the games in the seventh grade in the auxiliary gym. And then the JV girls game at 4.30 and then this game. And then the boys game to follow. Here's Erica Felker driving the right baseline, tight roping it to Kaylee Felker. Here's Chris Irvin, and they're going to get a three-second lane call on Scott City, the seventh Beaver turnover the half with 1.17 to go first half. Haven't seen that much all year, even with movement in the paints. We saw one in the boys' game at Hugoden on Tuesday night. We see one here tonight. Final minutes ago, the 10 of this first half, that is. Got set on a little bit of a drought, two-minute drought. Cimarron's with the last three points of the game. And a whistle. Hmm. Uh, that time, 
foul on Kaylee Felker, her first. Scott City second of the quarter with 64 seconds to go. Megan Trout, Avery Lewis re-enter. Exiting will be Krista Irvin and Kaylee Felker. So Scott City with their starting five back out there. Cimarron has Madeline Burkhardt and also Janae Fugit on the bench right now with two fouls. Inbound into Tegan Eskim, guarded by Kendall Gentry. She'll drive in. Runner up and no, but a foul on Kendall Gentry who's frustrated with Picking up the foul, that'll be her first, team's third, and that'll send Eskim to the line for two, where she is 67% on the year. Simran won a fourth line with exactly one minute to go first half. 25-12 lead here for Scott City. They have outscored Simran in this second, 13-9, and now 13-10. Tegan Eskim with six points on this quarter, and Simran the last four of the game. With one minute to go first half at 25-13. Second free throw coming up is also perfect. And now it's 25-14, so a little 5 a run by the Blue Jays. They've had runs of 6 and 5 in this second quarter. At a sandwich of 10 -0. Scott sitting around the pass a little high for Felker. And that is turnover number 8 on the Lady Beavers as they've turned the ball over five times this quarter. Had the right idea, just a little bit too high on the pass. Uh, 50 seconds to go first half. Chris Irvin's going to check in here next dead ball as it'll be... Tegan Eskin bringing it across, and now left side uh, to Jana Wilson, left corner now to Tegan Eskim. Eskim has had a big first half for Cimarron. She'll drive in, wrap around pass right side to Brady Burkhardt, and now to Tegan Eskim, back up high to Beeler. She'll try a deep two, no. Rebound tipped around in the hands of Erica Felker with 30 seconds to go first half, and then Erica is going to be fouled out high by Bailey Beeler. That is her second, and that'll send Erica to the line to shoot two. Lady Beavers are just three of seven at the line in this first half. Felker one of three. Fifth foul on Cimarron this quarter. Scott City trying to break a three minute drought in the process. With 28 seconds to go and she does, does Erica, 26 to 14. Felker now in nine already in this half. Leads Scott City in scoring. And no, on the 10th one, rebound ripped away that time by Kinsey Jans for Cimarron on the missed free throw. So it's a 12-point Scott City lead. 18 seconds to go first half. Cimarron to go for probably the final shot. 12 seconds left side to Burkhardt. Now up top it'll go with it. Now left side back to Tegan Eskim with five seconds with four. Goes left side, almost, and now pass underneath. Shot blocked by Felker. Oh, they call a foul on that? My goodness, she had all ball on that, and Felker picks up her second with one second to go and sends the freshman Burkhart to the line for two. Wow. Tough break for the Lady Beavers on that one. So now Erica Felker and Mackenzie Metzger with two fouls for Sky City. That's the fourth team foul in the quarter on the Blue Jays, and that free throw is good for the freshman Brady Burkhart, and she cuts the deficit to 26-15. One second to go first half. Tough call on Lady Beavers on that one. That looked like a clean block. And that one will bounce in. Cimarron getting the line in this second quarter and they will pull to within 10. And that's your first half. So Scott said he had a lead of 16, but the Lady Blue Jays go on a seven to one run over the last two minutes of the first half. And it's 26-16 at the break for Scott City over Cimarron. We'll come back in three minutes with your first half stats and more. This is Scott City Beaver Basketball. market for a new or used vehicle, check out J&R Car and Truck Center of Scott City. J&R Car and Truck has a fully trained service and parts staff for repairs on most makes and models of vehicles. Locally owned and operated, J&R Car and Truck Center provides new and used vehicles. Stop on in and check out jrcarandtruck.com for your next vehicle. J&R Car and Truck Center, your Chevrolet and GMC dealership in Scott City.
investing in our community is how we make a lasting impact. It's about more than just providing wireless services. We believe in rolling up our sleeves and working side by side with local organizations. Whether you're sharing cherished moments, staying updated on trends, or exploring your surroundings, we're there to keep you connected. Next Tech Wireless, we are Kansas. BBN is supported by Norder Supply, Lone Tree Farms, Pioneer Communications, Beaver Booster Club, White's Food Liner, Scott City Eye Center, Shells, Flowers, and More, Scott City Pharmacy, Giftologists, The dedicated team at Norder Supply is passionate about assisting our customers in achieving maximum net return per acre. That is how we define our success. Through unparalleled agronomic advice and best-in-class customer service, you can depend on us to do what is best for your operation. Ask them today about their spot-on service and how it can fill your needs. Norder Supply. Plain talk. Exceptional results. 12 to 3 after one, led by as many as 16, with about 317 to go in the first half at 25 to 9. And then Semron went on a seven run, one run over the final minute 58 of the first half to pull to within 10 at the break. at 26 to 16 part of it. They got to the foul line a little bit more. They only hit one two point basket in that first half, but still uh, lead for Lady Beavers here by 10. That's the most important thing for Scott City. First half scoring for Simron. It was Tegan Eskin, the sophomore, leading the way with seven. Six for Madeline Burkhardt. She had back-to-back -back threes. She came in hitting just one three all season. She has two in the first half. Also uh, for Simron, you have Jaina Wilson with one. And then also two for, or, yeah, two for Brady Burkhardt on a pair of free throws right at the end of the first half. For Scott City in the first half, Erica Felker leading the way with nine. Avery Lewis with a couple threes and a free throw. She has seven. Three for Megan Trout. Cheyenne Kramer, or correction, Kendall Gentry also with three on a second quarter triple. Cheyenne Kramer and Kaylee Felker each with a two-point basket in the first half. Foul trouble for both teams. Cimarron had Madeline Burkhardt, Janae Fugit. Bailey Beeler each with two fouls. Erica Felker and Mackenzie Metzger with two fouls each for Scott City. A lead of 10 at the break for Lady Beavers, 26 to 16 over Cimarron here in the second meeting of the year. We'll step aside for another three minute break, come back with some more first half stats and get you set up for the second half of play. This is Scott City Beaver basketball. basketball. They said this place was too isolated to call home. They said it was too remote to build a community. And then one day, a farmer strung a copper wire from one fence post to another and changed everything. We didn't build the communities of Southwest Kansas. No, we just brought them together. Dr. Yeager with Pro Health Chiropractic Office, what do you strive for with Sports your patients? Sports have this amazing way of making a positive impact in our community. Whether it's helping children, boosting local economies, or creating role models, that's our goal at American Implement, too. We believe in being a part of the communities we serve by just being a good neighbor. Thanks for being ours. There's nothing more spacious than Western Kansas, and nobody closer than our communities. We are determined to keep our communities connected to schools, kids to teachers and parents. We believe a connected world is a better place. We are more than what we do for our hometowns. It's what we do with our hometowns. S&T is proud to be your family, your friends, 
your neighbor. Quick scheduling and friendly hometown service. To schedule or for questions, call 620 872 5811. We run down some of the first half stats for Cimarron. They shot 4 of 15 from the floor in that first half, just south of 33%. Also, uh, they were one of nine on two-point baskets, three of six on threes, five of eight from the free throw line. The Cimarron did have 11 turnovers. They had a total of eight fouls, two steals, 12 defensive rebounds, two offensive boards for a total of 14 rebounds. They out-rebounded Scott City 14-12 uh, to 12 in the first half. Lady Beavers had nine defensive boards, three on the offensive side. They had three steals, eight turnovers, and seven fouls in the first half. Uh, Scott City shot 9 of 19, just below uh, 50%, about 48% in that first half. 4 of 8 on threes, 5 of 11 on twos, but struggled from the line at just 4 of 9 there in that first half. And so that's something they'll have to clean up. It'll be Cimarron's ball to begin the third quarter. Lady Beavers be on the road for three straight games beginning on Tuesday. Go to Hayes on Tuesday. And then it's at Ulysses on Friday. And then the following Tuesday at Lake. And Cimarron will host Ulysses tomorrow. And then they got Sublette and Lake and, uh, next week as well. Uh, some scores. Uh, Goodland hanging on to a four-point lead against Russell at the break, 29-25. Ulysses is uh, leading Hugoden 17-8 at the break. And Colby was leading Holcomb's 15 to 10 after one. It's Cimarron Blue Jay basketball with it is Tegan Eskim up top, guarded by Kendall Gentry, almost a five count now, gets a screen. And Tegan Eskim loses the ball, but finds it somehow to Morgan Eskim, who can't get the shot. And Erica Felker, the rebound outlet. Here's Kendall Gentry with it on the run, now stops, pulls up, finds it out high to Erica Felker. Right side to Avery Lewis. She'll drive the right baseline and will take it all the way. She'll lay it up and score it. She has nine. 28-16, first 30 seconds of the second quarter, or second half, excuse me, for Scott City. So Lady Beavers back up by a dozen. They've led by as many as 16 in this game. Madeline Burkhart now with it is Tegan Eskim. Nice give to Wilson who will lay it up and score it. On the backdoor feed, her first field goal, she has three, 28-18 with 7.09 to go third quarter and pressure off the inbounds. Here's Kendall Gentry with it. Uh, Avery Lewis, also Megan Trout and Cheyenne Kramer, the five on the four for Scott City as we're 60 seconds into this second half. Lewis with it, will lob it to Trout. Wants to go right side with it. Cheyenne Kramer will try a three. She'll bury a three. Kramer with eight threes on the year. Her fifth point, 31-18. Scott City with five threes on the night with 6.45 to go here in the third. So Lady Beavers, as I mentioned earlier, did not have a three at um, Hugoden on Tuesday night. They have made up four tonight with five of their own. With it out high is Tegan Eskim. Now here's an answer back three, and that is rimming in and out. And the rebound to Erica Felker. That was put up by Madeline Burkhart looking for a third three. Down the floor, Avery Lewis finds Kendall Gentry. Jump stop, bank shot. Oh, that crawls off just a little strong. And the rebound goes to Cimarron into the hands of Janae Fugit. As Cimarron brings it across quickly with 6.15 to go. Driving in, Fugit's shot is blocked out of bounds. And that'll still stay with Scott City. It's 6-13 here in the third. Lady Beavers up by 13 at 31-18. Inbound in to Simron. Fugit finds Jana Wilson. Simron just two seniors on there. Make that three, yeah, right, the first time, three seniors on their team. Here's Wilson driving right side, and a hand check foul in on Avery Lewis. That'll be her first, and that's the first foul of the second half either side here. 
602 here in the third. That Lewis at correction, that's her second. 602 here in the third inbound underneath the Wilson, and she has the last four for Cimarron. She has five on the night. 31-20 with 5.56 to go third quarter. With it is Avery Lewis, and now goes to Erica Felker into the front court, dribbles behind her back, and now flips it back up top between the circles to Avery Lewis. Lewis into Megan Trout at the foul line. Give and go, here's Avery Lewis, will drive in, splits the defenders, can't get the shot to go, and the rebound ripped away by Avery Lewis, and then she almost gets pushed underneath, and Scott City with another crack at it here, up by 11 with five and a half to go driving in, and that's gonna be a blocking foul. That'll be taking a gentry, a little shaken up. That'll be on Morgan Eskim, her first. First team foul of the second half on Cimarron. And two free throws coming up for the junior, Kendall Gentry. She's kind of taken the brunt of some force all night. And Gentry with two free throws coming up at 46% on the air, but has shot, shot it better as of late. Scott City struggling the line tonight, four of nine, and make it five of 10 as it's 32 to 20. 531 here in the third quarter. Gentry with her fourth point of the night, averaging eight a game. That'll be Avery Lewis. And McKenzie Metzger returns to the Scott City lineup. Second free throw up, and Gentry sinks them both and makes it a 13-point game, 33-20. She is now 50% on the year. With it now, and that's going to be a moving screen on Cimarron, as that'll be on Morgan Eskim. She picks up her third foul with 5.19 to go third quarter. And that'll be turnover number 12. And back in will be Bailey Bueller to replace Morgan Eskim. So Scott City with a 13-point lead in the ball. 5.15 here in the third at 33-20. to 20. Bounce pass to... Cheyenne Kramer now to Kendall Gentry. Gentry holds it, looking for a screen, finds Erica Felker up top. She'll drive right side, nice dish, backside, trying to get it to Trout, but the hands in the passing lane by Burkhart and a steal. That'll be Scott City's ninth turnover, and then a steal and a put back in. I believe that was Kendall Gentry for two. She has seven, 35-20. 4.51 to go third quarter. So Scott City with that steal back. And now here's a three on the left side. Short rebound ripped away by the Blue Jays. Beeler and a whistle and a travel. That'll be their 14th of the night. As Xavier Lewis in for Cheyenne Kramer. With 4.44 here in the third. Scott City has pushed their lead all of a sudden up to 15 at 35 to 20, looking to extend their lead here. They've scored the last four in the ball game. Gentry right corner to McKenzie Metzger. She loses it, but dribbling it on the baseline was Jana Wilson. It'll still stay with the white-shirted Lady Beavers at 435 here in the third. As Erica Felker to inbound it in. She'll find Avery Lewis who goes up and her shot is blocked on the rebound. Here's Burkhart with it. She gets out of there. She has her fifth board and then she carries it. And Simron with a turnover, their 15th. So back over here with it is Lady Beavers. Nice cut, Avery Lewis goes up high off the glass and she has 11. Lady Beavers in double figures there, 37 to 20 with 4.15 to go third quarter. And Scott City with their largest lead now at 17 as they have scored the last six. Near the midway mark of this third period in the front corner, they're taking Eskim, gets it poked away, but picked up by Simron. And they'll go in with it. Fugit, and she'll get fouled, and she'll head to the line for two. That'll be team foul number two in the quarter on Scott City. And that's on Erica Felker, and that is her third foul with 4.03 to go third quarter. And two free throws coming up here for Janae Fugit, her first trip to the line. She's just 42% on the air at the line at 8 of 19. And as I say that, she improves her free throw percentage. She hits that one 37-21. 4.03 here in this third is that'll be Erica Felker, Chris Irvin in. And so Felker with nine points and now three fouls. Second free throw off the back iron, and Cimarron now is uh, 6 of 10 as Avery Lewis collects the ball for Scott City. Halfway mark of this third quarter. Lady Beavers doing a better job on the glass here in this third quarter. As they give it to Kendall Gentry, left side, and Mackenzie Metzger lines up a three. No, rebound backside to Jana Wilson for Cimarron. 
3.45 here in the go and in the third. That was Metzger's first shot attempt and almost a walk by, or double dribble by Wilson. Entry feed to Beeler left side. Here's a Tegan Eskim three. No, and the rebound here, Scott City's Metzger. She's gonna race it across. She's gonna take it all the way. She probably got away the walk, but she's fouled going up and she'll get two free throws with 3.29 here in the third. So good job by Scott City boarding that one again. That foul is gonna be on Jana Wilson, her second. And the third Blue Jay foul of the quarter. Two free throws coming up here for Mackenzie Metzger. She ends looking for her first point, and she's got it. She is now four of nine on the year at the line. As Scott City now leading 38 to 21 with 3.29 here in the third. Back in for Scott City's Kaylee Felker, and also in for the Blue Jays is Madeline Burkhart. And Meg. Metzger's second free throw off to the right. Rebound Bailey Beeler for Cimarron. We're at 3.20 to go third quarter and just checking up a three is crawling off in and out for Brody Burkhardt. Here's Cimarron back, or Scott City back the other way. Kendall Gentry can get it from Avery Lewis and then we're gonna get a whistle and a tie up. It'll still be Scott City's ball out of all that. To the rebound with 3.13 here in the third. So Scott City maintains possession of the ball with a 38 to 21 lead, matching their largest here. As Kendall Gentry into Kaylee Felker, she'll go to the left side and she has four points off the ends bounds and Scott City with a 40 to 21 lead as we get to three minute mark of this third quarter. So Scott City back up by 19 now, their largest of the night. They have, they're on a nine to two run over the last two and a half minutes. Felker blocks the shot that time of Cimarron and back with it is Kendall Gentry. I believe that was put up by Beeler. Here's Scott City trying to extend their lead. Up top, Avery Lewis quickly guarded and now goes right side over to Kendall Gentry. By the way, Avery Lewis two away from a career high. Here's Kaylee Felker. She'll almost tie a career high. That one rims in and out on the left baseline and the rebound to Tegan Eskim. This pulled down seven boards for Cimarron. 40 to 21 with 2.25 to go third quarter. Cimarron with about a three and a half minute field goal drought. Scott sit on a nine to one run here over the last three minutes. Until then, the layup is good. And timeout for the Blue Jays. That was put. Eskim with her ninth point. Timeout Cimarron will take it as well with 2.15 to go, third quarter. 40-23, Scott City back in a minute. This is Beaver Basketball. Basketball. Preparation pays on the field and in life. I'm Michael Trout with State Farm in Scott City. If something happened and you weren't here tomorrow, would your family be provided for? Life insurance is just the right thing to do, the way to be prepared. Stop by or give us a call at Michael Trout State Farm. We can work with you to find the best life insurance plan to fit your needs or to make sure you have enough. This isn't something to put off another day. On the field of life, be prepared. Michael Trout, State Farm, Scott City. My good neighbor, State Farm. When you want plain talk with exceptional results, count on Norner Supply to serve you. With over 40 years of experience in the crop protection business, the dedicated team in Norner Supply is passionate about assisting you. Norner has been a leading provider of optometry services and vision care products in the Scott City community since 1999. Our experienced eye doctors offer comprehensive vision examinations that our Scott City Optometry Office specializes in the diagnosis and treatment of a wide array of eye diseases, conditions, and problems. We use advanced diagnosis diagnostic technology and we are committed to improving the quality of life. Give yourself the gift of clear vision by scheduling an appointment with Dr. Joshua Gooden. Blue Jays today. burn the timeout with 2.15 to go. After the layup that time by Eskim, she has nine to lead Cimarron tonight in transition. Here's Megan Trout goes in. She is fouled from behind. That's on Madeline Burkhart. That is her third with 2.07 to go third quarter and the team's third of the quarter. So Trout with just three points tonight. Cimarron is cut her off quite a bit, but others have stepped up for the Lady Beavers here tonight. Trout with two free throws coming up here with 207 here in the third. Free throw number one for her is good. She has four, 41-23. Scott City now with a 15-7 run here in this third, as that'll be Madeline Burkhart, and in is Kinsey Jantz, the 5A junior. Second free throw good as well for Trout. Scott City now up by 19 as they've shot the free throws better in this quarter. Now five of six, nine of 15 for the game. They lead by 19, two minutes here in the third quarter. They go to Hayes on Tuesday. 
Right side shot is blocked that time, and the rebound goes to McKenzie Metzger, attempt for Tegan Eskin, trying to get to double figures. Metzger with her second board of the night. Trout with it, gives it to Erica Felker, and there were three fouls. Kaylee Felker up top, McKenzie Metzger, and now he uses upper dribble. Now he's trying to avoid the five count, act out high to Erica. With a 95 second mark, and now driving in is Trout as she gets that one to spin in for her second field goal of the night. She has seven, and it's a 44 23 lead to 90 seconds to go here in the third. So Scott City back or is up by 21. Here with a minute 20 to go here in the third. Left side, it goes over to Jana Wilson. Wilson up top to Brady Burkhart. Burkhart gets a screen, goes to her left, gets it poked away in a steal. Same round with the 16th turnover, two and one numbers. Here's the lead pass. Kinsey Metzger trips over her own feet, and that'll go out of bounds to Simron, Scott City's 10th error of the night. With minute five to go third quarter back in is going to be Janae Fugit. And uh, she will replace Bailey Beeler for Cimarron with minute five here in the third. Minute to go in this third. Right now, Houston Frank is on the map for Scott City at 1675 in the semis at Rocky Well. And right wing three is too strong for Janae Fugit and rebound. Erica Felker, she's going to be pushed, and she's going to go back to the free throw line on the other end. She grabbed the board. That is her fourth of the night and two free throws, trying to get to double figures. Houston Frank in a lot of trouble, though, in the first period, already down 9-1. to one. So Felker to the line, shoot two. Trying to get to double figures, and she does. Makes it 45-23 of 49.7 to go here in the third. That is Chris Irvin. Kendall Gentry to check in for Erica if she hits that free throw, but she doesn't. The rebound to Tegan Eskim. Here, so it's 45-23, 45 seconds to go third quarter, 19 to seven third quarter run for Scott City. They're really on a 14-3 run over the last five minutes of play. 35 seconds to go third period, trying to drive in is Tegan Eskim. She'll lay it up, misses it off the left rebound, Megan Trout at it, and then she gets tied up and that'll be Cimarron's ball. With 29.2 to go here in the third. So the Blue Jays will keep the possession here. And Kendall Gentry can come in for Erica Felker. 29.2 here in the third. And ball deflected and ripped away by Cheyenne Kramer. 17th Blue Jay turnover of the night. Here comes Scott City with it with Avery Lewis. Final 20 seconds here in the third. Now with it is Trout trying to go to her right. Drives in, layup, nice, powerful move. She has six in the quarter, nine for the game, 47, 23 with eight seconds to go. All of a sudden, this is a 24-point game. Three seconds, two, one, and a two get three is short, and that's the end of your third quarter. Lady Beavers have opened up a 47-23 lead here on Cimarron as we head to the fourth using a 21-7 run. We'll come back in a minute for the fourth quarter. This is Beaver Basketball. Basketball. As your local community foundation, we are dedicated to preserving local wealth so the communities in and around Scott County will forever remain an attractive place to live, work, and raise a family. We respond to the needs of our community through grant making, scholarships, and other special projects. To learn more, visit us online at scottcf.org. Adding value to our community has been our priority since day one. That's why the Scott Co-op is here with eight elevator locations, two service stations, five car trolls, bulk fuel and oil delivery, as well as a full service agronomy department, including agronomy services, seed, chemical, fertilizer, and custom application. Visit us online at scottcoop.com or download our app for more information. Scott Co-op is a proud supporter of our local communities. Equal Housing Lender. Fourth quarter set to begin. Lady Beavers have, are up by 24 now. 47-23 as they used a 21-7. Third quarter run tripled up. 
The now Lady Blue Jays, it'll be their ball to begin the fourth quarter with Avery Lewis, McKenzie Metzger out there, Kendall Gentry, Megan Trout, and Cheyenne Kramer. Lady Beavers led tonight, balanced attack, 11 for Avery Lewis, 10 for Erica Felker, and nine for Megan Trout. We've got a holding foul out. That is going to be on, I believe, Mer Morgan Eskim. Nope, correction. Kinsey Janser first. First foul of the fourth quarter. Cimarron led nine from Tegan Eskim. Avery Lewis trying to inbound it in. will lob it out high to Cheyenne Kramer. Nice cut trout, but poked away. Good scrappy defense by Morgan Eskin there out there with her three fouls. Still stayed Lady Beaver ball with 7.43 to go. Sky City shooting 10 of 17 to line. Simmer on 6 of 10 here tonight. Lady Beavers have hit five threes. Up top, deflected and a good defensive play by Tegan Eskim and a turnover. Here's Eskim going all the way. Her lip leaves it short in the rebound to Kendall Gentry, who collects her third board of the night. That was Sky City's 11th turnover. They've done a good job of cutting the turnovers down. Now Metzger will split the defenders. And here's Kendall Gentry driving all the way. Here, layup left side, no, and she'll get two free throws. Was 7.27 to go. That's already the second foul on Simra on this fourth quarter and the second on Tegan Eskim. Two free throws coming up for Kendall Gentry. Seven points tonight. And make it eight. 48-23 with 7.27 to go. Cimarron had cut it to 11 early in the third quarter. Since then, it's been a 17-3 run for Scott City and making an 18-3. So four players for Lady Beavers have scored at least nine points tonight. And Gentry joins the nine-point club with it 49-23 with 7.20 to go. She's point above her season average. With it is Jana Wilson. Scott City's held her to five tonight and a whistle. We got a late whistle and a push. That'll be on Scott City their first of the fourth quarter with 7.13 remaining. They'll get McKenzie Metzger with her third foul. So Metzger and Felker both with three fouls for Scott City. That's Erica Felker, that is. Inbound into Jana Wilson and now to Madeline Burkhart, now left block. Here's a turnaround jumper. Misses wide right for Morgan Eskim and tracked down by McKenzie Metzger. She'll take it across right to left. First minute of this fourth quarter. Lady Beavers on a run here. Up 49-23. Megan Trout holds it right elbow. Up top to McKenzie Metzger. She has one point tonight at the line. One to two from the line. Now uses up a dribble. Finds Kendall Gentry. Gentry double teamed. Get out, gets out of the double team, and now they try to get it to Megan Trout. Deflected and a turnover. That might have been forced a little much there, and Scott City with the turnover, the 12th of the night. And it's stripped, but picked up by Cimarron. With it is Madeline Burkhart. She's at the right block. Wraparound pass. Somehow gets it to Morgan Eskim, and they save it, taking Eskim, and now to Jada Wilson out high, tracks it down with 6.20 to go. Wilson will drive left side, and she, oh, man. She was may have gotten away with a carry. They're going to call a foul on Scott City as they're bailed out there. Uh, Kendall Gentry, her first. Team second of the fourth quarter with 6.20 to go. Erica Felker in to replace McKenzie Metzger. Both teams have already two fouls here early in the fourth quarter. you got to wonder, maybe starting to get a little tired here at the end of this one. Cimarron trying to inbound it to avoid the five count and getting to Wilson in the touch pass. Here's Burkhart, and she's going to be called for the walk. And seen a little bit or quite a few more mistakes here with 6.18 to go. Mistakes for both sides. That's the 18th of the night on Cimarron. As Avery Lewis has it, dribbles behind the back and then stops, gets it to Kendall Gentry in the front court with 6'10 to go up top to Megan Trout. Back up top to Avery Lewis and get a whistle, and that'll be a holding foul. And Jana Wilson beside herself on the call as she commits foul number three with 6.07 to go. Already three on the Blue Jays here in the fourth quarter. Avery Lewis to inbound it in. Erica Felker got the screen, but deflected, pick back up. Trying to get it into Trout, but good defense on her. Left side, here's Lewis. Now to Trout. Ball deflected, but picked up by Trout. She has to pick it up out high. Now Kenda Gentry left wide open for a three. Off to the right, rebound, loose, and picked up as bodies hit the floor. And Morgan Eskim collects just her second rebound of the night. As Kendall trying to go for double figures there. Right side, here's a three for Janae Fugit on target, but no. Rebound, Avery, or correction, Kendall Gentry, and then to Shane Kramer. Now, Erica Felker down the floor to Avery Lewis. Her layup is good and one. 
She ties a career high, or she's actually one off a career high, ties the season high with 13 on that basket, 51, 23 and five, 34 to go. Team found number four on Simron in the quarter. It might have been on Wilson, that's her fourth, and it is. So Avery Lewis with 13 tonight leads Scott City, has a chance to tie her career high, she set against Hugoton on this court a year ago. Misses it, but Megan Trout with the rebound and can't get the put back and then rebound Cimarron through all that traffic. And then Cimarron loses it out of bounds, but then they save it into play. Oh, a flurry for the basketball there. 5.20 to go in this one. Scott City with a 28-point lead. They've scored the last 11 points of the game, and that one rims in and out on the three. And Gentry with her fourth board of the night. She tries to race it across here with 5.08 to go, and she does into the front court. And now finds Erica Felker. Cheyenne Kramer in the left corner tees up a three. Too strong, but Avery Lewis on the backside board. And we have a whistle on the... Okay, push off foul, I guess, on Lewis. That'll be your third with 4.59 to go. Third foul of the fourth quarter here with 4.57 to go. Yes, the official on the backside said Lewis pushed off. 51-23, Scott City lead here. Cimarron has not scored a field goal in almost eight minutes, and that's going to be a, a foul up top. Kendra Gentry picks up her third foul with 4.45 to go. Team's fourth now. So both teams have four fouls here in the fourth quarter with 4.45 remaining. Inbound out high to Tegan Eskim. And now goes to Madeline Burkhart. Burkhart is going to drive, try to go around Trout, but almost stripped out of there, and it is, but kept alive by Cimarron and then poked away momentarily, but it stays with the Lady Blue Jays. And now ball loose, stripped out of there again. And this time, Scott said he win, almost wins the war. Avery Lewis does, and no. It's now Simron and stuffed by Kramer. That is not a foul. That's all ball. But the official says otherwise, and that's going to be Kramer's first. And Scott City commits team foul number five of the quarter of 4.22 to go. Madeline Burkhart with six points tonight has two free throws. Looked like all ball, but... Official had a better view down on that end, and Madeline Burkhardt ends a long drought for Simron. 51-24, a 4.22 to go. That'll break the 11-0 Scott City run, their first points in nearly six minutes. They have not had a field goal in almost eight minutes. Second free throw, too strong, as Burkhardt has seven, as Avery Lewis tracks down the board in the corner for Scott City. They have... Done a better job on the glass here tonight. We're at the 4.15 mark of the fourth quarter. Lewis will get it to Erica Felker. Felker weaves her way through, finds Chris Irvin who just returned. She'll drive in, she'll put one up. Oh, that crawls off. Rebound loose and then picked up by Cimarron as they fought for it underneath at the midway point of this fourth quarter. It was Brady Burkhart with the rebound for the Blue Jays, their 19th defensive rebound of the night. 3.55 to go. Cimarron with the ball down 28. 51, 24 or 27, excuse me, she went 24, and they're going to lose it out of bounds. They have not put the 24th point up on the board yet. 3.51 to go. Lewis trying to get it in, and get, just gets it into Felker, and that one's tipped out. 3.50 to go. Three fifty remaining. Shine Kramer will lob it into Erica Felker. She'll race across two and one numbers. Here's Chris Irvin this time. She'll lay it up. That one just a little strong. Rebound. Felker had it, but then lost. Picked up by Chris Irvin up top. Avery Lewis for a career high. Oh, that was halfway in and out. And Erica Felker with a rebound for Scott sitting another crack at it. Now to Megan Trout goes to Avery Lewis. She'll drive right baseline. Nice strong move, and she has a foul and two free throws coming up for Avery, and she'll have two opportunities for a career high. With 3.29 to go, that's on Brady Burkhart, her first. Double bonus now with 3.29 to go, so Avery Lewis at line. Scott City 10 of 18 there tonight. Free throw for Lewis. She ties a career high. 52-24, 3.29 to go. Kaylee Felker in for Cheyenne Kramer. Megan Trout exits. As in for the first time is the sophomore Piper Fox. She did not play. She had, a, I believe, I don't know, it was a fracture or something with her pinky last week. 
or a finger. But she's back in there for Scott City. Did not play at Sterling last week. Another sub in for Cimarron. Kinsey Jantz, the 5'8 junior. 3.29 to go. I guess we'll go with what the scoreboard says. It's 52-23. And with the rebound is Eskim. Taking Eskim. She's close to a double-double. She has nine points and nine rebounds unofficially. She uses up her dribble, goes out high to Janae Fugit. She'll drive right on Erica Felker and then right off her foot. And for Cimarron's 20th turnover. As they apply the full court pressure down 29 with 3.15 to go. Avery Lewis to inbound. It does so to Erica Felker. Now to Piper Fox. Now to Chris Irvin who flashes in the middle to Kaylee Felker. She'll drive left side. Her layup partially blocked. Rebound Piper Fox goes up, throws it up. Correction, that's Chris Irvin. And Irvin with a chance at two free throws. Coming up with 3.06 to go. That foul on Tegan Eskimer, third. Two free throws coming up with 3.06 to go for Irvin, who's 38% on, or make that 50% on the line. And she hits that one for a first point, 53-23 with 3.06 to go. Second free throw also good for Irvin, and now it's a 30-point game. 54-24, 3.05 to go. With it left side, and now poked away by Metzger out of bounds. With 2.54 to go, it's a continuous clock. It's a 30-point margin. That's where Burkhardt hit that free throw. Okay. It is 54-24. Conferring with another source, so... Coach Jamie Felker goes deeper to the bench. The starter's night are done. Lewis, the lone starter out there, has a tie to career high with 14. And now ball deflected. But Scott City's going to sweep Cimarron for the first time since 2020. And they're going to get win number eight, matching the win total from a year ago as Cimarron loses it out of bounds for their 21st turnover. And Coach Amy Felker will call time with 2.21 to go to get the tubes aligned. We'll take a 30-second break with 2.21 to go. 54-24 Scott City. Back in a minute, this is Lady Beaver basketball. Ball. We're back here. Basketball presented here by Fro Heating and Cooling Fro Ag Services. Good anesthesia and pain management services. Great Western Tire. Also, Deckmar Furniture Appliance. High Choice Feeders. Hey, Amy Farms. HRC Feed Yards. JNR Car and Truck. JNR Trucking. JFB for Advertising. Jackson Legal Group and Lebanon and Tree. So, Scott City will roll out a new five, or four of the five anyway. Piper Fox, Valeria Castillo, Katie Weathers, Peyton Gentry, and Cami Winderland. So all 13 Lady Beavers will check in here tonight. That pass deflected for Castillo, but kicked alive by Katie Weathers. Dwinderland up top to Peyton Gentry with 2.10 to go. Gentry goes to her left of the pass to Valeria. Castillo gets a screen. And now, oh, she a Merrill air mails that one out of bounds into the second row. Erica Felker didn't decide to give him up and catch it. She could have just tried to step on the court, you know, catch it, stay in, and see if the officials figured it out, but did not. <laughs> Minute 45 to go on this one. 54-24, Scott City with a 30-point lead. Lobbed, uh, caught underneath, and the bank shot is good, and double figures for the sophomore taken esque and their first field goal in over 10 minutes, 11 minutes, 54-26, with 128 to go. And now uh, high, here's Valeria Castillo for two. All oh, that rims off. Rebound Peyton Gentry backside. She'll weave her way around, lose it, and she draws a pushing foul. And she will be at the line for two free throws for her first varsity free throw attempts of her career. That's on Met Bailey Beeler, her third with 108 to go. So I mentioned two free throws. Continuous clock, final minute. Coach Austin Stebbins is going to send in a new five. Free throw, oh, Gentry short on that one. That's Peyton Gentry. 
In limited varsity play, she's averaging just under a minute a game. Alicia Torres, a 5'6 junior. And then they go deeper to the bench. Ashlyn Randa. I also mentioned Torres. Also out there is a number 13. I have no idea. But the second free throw for Peyton Gentry is good. 55-26 with 34 seconds to go. That's her first varsity point at home of her young career. Semron with the ball. Driving right side, that's Torres, and she draws the foul with 20 seconds ago. And that might about end this ball game. Also in there is Katrina Walker, a 5'6 freshman. All right, who was that foul on? I believe that was on Weathers. But the free throw is good for Alicia Torres. Makes it 55-27. And that'll be in the end of your game. Hit, make, miss. She'll make it. 55-28 is going to be your final for Scott City. As the Lady Beavers do improve uh, to 8-5 on the year, 1-0 in the league. Semron drops to 2-10 on the year. They're 0-2 in GWAC play. So Scott City with three in a row in the win column. Post-game show to come, in, come your way in three minutes. This is Scott City basketball. Oh. Go with the proven winner. I'm Michael Trout from State Farm in Scott City. When it comes to auto insurance, we score big with our policyholders. We score on competitive rates, on customer service, and on satisfaction and speedy claim handling. Let us quote your autos today and make you a part of the Trout State Farm team. Call or stop by Michael Trout State Farm and you can be assured of our personal best. Go with the winner, Michael Trout State Farm, Scott City. more farmers. People who know the land. People who support rural communities. People who are as diverse as each acre they care for. But unless you've been born and raised on a family farm, it's nearly impossible to become a farmer. That's why we are building a team of people from our hometown and across the world to do what they love. We are not just a family farm. We are a multi-family farm. We are Volgamore Family Farms. 
12 second half run and win it here tonight, 55 to 28. So Scott City with an 8 and 5 record, 1 and 0 in the conference, matching their win total from last year as Cimarron drops to 2 and 10 on the year. They're 0 and 2 in conference play. Lady Beavers trailed early 3 to nothing and then went on a 12 0 run. Actually, a 15 0 run was all said and done. He used runs of 15, 10, also 6, 11 to build up their lead and win it here tonight, 55 to 28. Final numbers here in this one for Cimarron. They were led tonight by Tegan Eskam, a 5'7 sophomore. She finishes with a team high 11. Seven from Madeline Burkhart. She had six in that first half on a couple of threes. Uh, five for Jana Wilson and two uh, for Alicia Torres, uh, two for Brady Burkhart, and one tonight for Janae Fugit. Uh, Cimarron in the game. They were one of two, three of four in that fourth quarter for the line, nine of 14 for the game. They had 21 turnovers, six deals, 21 defensive rebounds, five offensive boards, 26 boards in the game tonight. For Scott City tonight, uh, they were led. Avery Lewis, she tied a career high with 14. She had 14 a year ago against Huguenin here at home. Ten for Erica Felker, Kendall Gentry, Megan Trout each with nine. And then after that, five for Cheyenne Kramer. Kaylee Felker had four. Ooh, do do two for Chris Irvin. And Mackenzie Metzger, Peyton Gentry each with a free throw tonight for Scott City. Lady Beavers at the line a little better here tonight. One of three, three of five, four of six in the fourth quarter. Uh, oh, crap. Uh, sorry about that. I'm counting as we go. Four of four, five of six, five of seven, six of nine in the fourth quarter. 16 of 26 unofficially at the line for the Lady Beavers here tonight. They did hit five threes. They had 21 defensive rebounds, four offensive boards, 25 rebounds. Uh, rebounds were pretty even Steven here tonight. They did have seven steals unofficially. 12 turnovers here tonight for Scott City's the Lady Beavers. Pick up a nice victory here tonight. There's a running clock for the final three minutes of the game. As it hit the 30-point margin, Scott City led by as many as 30 there at 54-24 late in the fourth quarter and ended up winning here tonight 55-28. to Some other scores of interest here uh, tonight uh, from the GWAC. Uh, first meeting of the year between or between Ulysses and Hugoton and Ulysses, they pick up their second win of the year. Doesn't count toward the league standings as they defeated Hugoton tonight, 39 to 23. Going into the fourth quarter in Holcomb, Colby leading the Holcomb Lady Longhorns, 43 to 29. And in the only non-head-to-head -head league matchup, it is uh, Goodland taking on Russell. And uh, it was a close one at halftime. It's 29-25 at the break, but Goodland has poured it on. They're up by 16 over the Russell Lady Broncos as they're going to the fourth quarter at 43-27. Here tonight, Lady Beavers prevail here by the final of 55-28. We'll take another timeout. Let's take a uh, two-minute break for now. We'll have a coach's interview coming up. It may be Coach Amy Felker. She's making her way up. Let's come back in two minutes. This is Scott City Beaver Basketball. Western State Bank proudly supports Scott Community High School students and athletes as they prepare for another great year of achievements. Just as our students prepare for another successful year, we encourage you to be prepared for whatever life may bring you. Stop in and talk with the knowledgeable staff at Western State Bank, whether it be a new home loan, financing for your business, or any one of our checking and savings account options. We're here to help you. Make sure to check out all of our internet banking options provided at wsbks.com. Western State Bank, member FDIC. And as always, go Beaver!
CBN is supported by Shapland Real Estate, State Farm, The Original Grande, Bullertson Family Dentistry, Volgamore Family Farms, Western State Bank, Wood River Energy, Scott Community Foundation, Good Anesthesia and Pain Management Services, South Highway 83, Scott City, where they do whatever it takes. Back here at the Scott Community Event Center, Lady Beavers prevail here tonight uh, by the count of 55-28. As we get to talk with Coach Amy Felker. Coach, congratulations on the win. Uh, you trailed early three to nothing and then started getting things going here and led at the break there, 26-16, uh, used a 15-0 run in that first half. Uh, initial thoughts on tonight's ball game. You know, I think I think our defense was pretty spot on tonight. We had some great help defensive plays. You know, everybody was jumping out on the on the ball screen. We had people sagging down and covering the backside block when they had to cover over. So just overall, our defense was great. We had each other's back. We were prepared. And then we didn't have to do very many second shots. You know, we got that rebound, and then we were using that to create our offense. I think you're fairly even and not on the boards with Simron, so that's something you really had to like. Yeah, we did, you know, we, we work hard, you know, we were a little slow on the rebounds for a little while, but, you know, we worked hard uh, getting back to the basket. We got some good offensive rebounds a few times, so we just got to keep, keep working on that. And you had to like uh, what you saw from your offense, and you had a feeling that they were going to double up on Megan at the post, and they did that. Well, that opened up some opportunities. You got some threes to kind of loosen that up. You got them from Avery. You got them from Erica. And, uh, you know, four different players for you guys hit threes tonight. You know, uh, we've been working, and, you know, we've been not shooting our threes very well. And tonight they had the confidence. We stepped up. We knocked some down. And that really opened things up. Then people were flying, and then they did what they needed to do, and they started attacking, which drew some fouls, mm -hmm. you know. And then with the guards doing so much the first half, second half allowed Megan to get some one-on-one -on -one, uh, to the basket and get some easy shots there. So, you know, everybody just worked so hard together, and it just clicked. That was uh, it was big for you guys, and I thought your defense really got better as the game went along. You know, it did. Uh, we started to under know their plays. By the end of the game, they were running the same thing. We knew what they were going to do, and they 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 wanted to attack that second half. You know, we were going to win the second half. We weren't just going to win the first half, and and they just kept battling. And I'm you know I'm super proud of their effort tonight. Hey. And for a second straight game here, if my math serves me right, you give up three field goals in the second half. Wow. <laughs> and 12 points. Wow. And so, yeah, one, two, three, yeah. So That says a lot for our defense, you know. Super proud of the girls for that effort. Absolutely. Uh, but a big win, you get to eight wins, and for, more importantly, get a league victory as well. Those are always huge things. But now you step next week out of conference play to start a three-game road swing and a, and a pretty uh, tough for Hayes High team to start off on Tuesday night. You know, Hayes is going to be tough. They, they're athletic and they're big. And, you know, we're going to get prepared for them on Monday. We're going to come out and uh, compete and do the best we can. All right, well, Coach, uh, congratulations on the victory, 8-5 and five on the year, 1-0 conference, and Hayes on Tuesday night. Thanks again for the time. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Adam. We'll see you. You betcha. Once again, Coach Amy Felker joining me in postgame. Lady Beavers prevail here tonight. Thank you. Uh, by the count of 55 to 28. We'll step aside. We'll take another two-minute break, and we'll have our pregame interview with head coach Brian Gentry. Once again, that's on the other side of a two-minute timeout. This is Scott City Beaver basketball. 
Fairly Feed Yard is dedicated to investing in our facilities and staff to provide the best experience possible for the cattle feeder and in the end, the consumers of our product. We are always in the market to purchase corn and other commodities from local producers. Call our office at 620-872-2111 for current pricing. Our dedicated employees and their families are very important to us and we are proud of their children that are current beavers and individuals that will grow into those roles in the future. Fairly Feed Yard is privileged to support Scott City Youth and are honored to cheer on the beavers. Looking for the latest in-home decor and more? Head to your shopping destination for Southwest Kansas, Giftologist in Scott City. Giftologist has a big lineup of today's trends in jewelry, decor, cookware, scented candles, a wide variety of Yeti products, and more. Did I mention that we also have a great selection of gifts for kids? While you're in, grab a cup of coffee while you browse the store. Giftologist has that big city store with the small town feel. The country oven baked goods are available daily. Indulge your spirit and head for to your shop. exceptional service in real estate, put Stephanie Chaplin at Chaplin Real Estate to work for you. Property homework is what we do best at Chaplin Real Estate. We put forth every effort to get results that move you. Our expertise in buying and selling residential, commercial, and agriculture property is built on the tradition of trust and thoroughness that you deserve. Chaplin Real Estate takes pride in our community and in cheering on our students in all that they do. Give Chaplin Real Estate a call or visit our website today. At American Implement, we know that our farmers and ranchers are getting up and going to work every morning to provide food, fuel, and fiber for the world. And even though time and technology keeps us constantly changing, one thing will always remain the same. We promise that we'll continue working right beside you. We appreciate all that you do for our country and our communities. From all of us at American Implement, thank you. And may God bless the American farmer and rancher. BBN is brought to you by American Implement, All in One Wash, B&H Paving, Fairly Company, Faroe Heating and Cooling, First National Bank, Great Western Tire, Harris Chiropractic, It was a little bit back and forth early on, but I grabbed a big lead in the first quarter. It was just kind of tough to overcome. Yeah, it was. And, uh, you know, offensively, we struggled to kind of find our, our rhythm, um, which a lot of that is because uh, their defense kind of takes you out of what you want to do. And, um, so we, we got to be a little bit more uh, assertive getting the ball down into our post and really looking uh, at Jackson down there. Um, he needs to touch the ball quite a bit. But, uh, you know, Tuesday night, great team. Um, I'm not taking anything away from them. We just didn't, you know, didn't really execute defensively. We struggled with some ball screen situations. So I uh, got to do better in those in those areas, uh, and then we'll be fine. Well, we did have good uh, a night from Alex Tarango. He was he really had one of his better games of the year. He tacked the basket, got downhill, and I think that's going to be big for you guys uh, coming down the stretch. Yeah, you know, Alex did a great job for us uh, getting to the basket. Um, he cuts well without the ball as well. Um, we just got to do a, a, a good job of space on the floor, you know. And, and, I, and when I talk about our flow, it's, it's you know, we, we can't have random cutters because if, if three guys decide to cut at once, we limit our spacing. So uh, we, we've got to do a better job, and, 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 and they have. You know, we've, we've really focused on that the last couple of days as far as, you know, getting through our, our kind of our routine, through our, our flow game. And, um, so that way we're all on the same page. Um, with that, you know, we'll, we'll get to better space. Um, it, it'll give us a little bit more structure to, to what we're looking for. So, uh, looking forward to tonight. Uh, should be a good environment. You know, hopefully we get a lot of people out here because it's a big day. You know, a lot of, a lot of basketball being played in Scott City today, so it should be fun. Coach Brian Gentry here pregame tonight. Scott City takes on uh, Cimarron, a Blue Jay team that's had uh, three wins coming into the year tonight. And uh, they're a team that uh, it was a scrappy game. There was a tough, hard fought road victory on the road uh, earlier in December. And uh, what have you seen maybe different from Cimarron this time around? Um, you know, defensively, uh, it's kind of the same. They, they run and jump. Number 14's got to run and jump a lot. So anytime that they score, he'll be up on the ball, and, and he usually it usually leads into a, a run and jump around half court. So um, we've got to be good at attacking out of that, that trap. Uh, we've got to get it out of there and then attack. Um, offensively, you know, it, it all starts with, you know, keeping Copper in front of you. Uh, but with that said, you know, 24 has been shooting the ball better for him. 14 has been more aggressive and more assertive on, on the offensive side. Uh, so we, we, need, we need we need a good defensive performance uh, tonight. You know, our, our team needs to uh, really 
make it tough to score um, on them and then rebound the first shot and get out and go. But again, you know, the, the Copper Kid really hurt us in the first half of the first game. Uh, really got downhill. Uh, we were reaching too much, so we got to do a better job of keeping it in front of us. All right, that's uh, round uh, two with Scott City and Cimarron here as Coach Brian Gentry joins us here pregame. And Coach, thanks for the time. Good luck to you guys. Uh, thanks, so. I'm Scott City Beaver Coach Brian Gentry. Pregame interview brought to you by Farmville Financial Services with Ian Bird events at Scott City and Leota. More to come on your pregame show. We'll have a breakdown of the matchup, starters, keys to the game, and the tip off coming up after this timeout. This this is Scott City Beaver Basketball. BBN is brought to you by HRC Feed Yards, JNR, Next Tech Wireless, Red Barn Enterprises, SNT Communications, Scott County Hospital, Scott Co op, Security State Bank. Turner Sheet Metal. For O Heating and Cooling of Scott City is a proud sponsor of Beaver Activities. Brent and Angie take pride in helping our activities and support our students 100%. They can also help you with any heating and cooling needs that you have. Give For O Heating and Cooling a call at 620-872-3508 and see if they can help you with your needs today. Terms and conditions apply. See store for details. All right, we welcome you back here to uh, Scott Community Event Center here for Beaver Basketball tonight. Scott City trying to get to win number eight and snap a three-game losing streak here tonight as they take on the uh, Cimarron uh, Blue Jays. Unfortunately, the Beavers are going to be a little short-handed here tonight. Avery Nolan is going to be out. He suffered an injury in practice on Thursday. He's on crutches, and he'll be out uh, for a period of time. And Dylan Duff is going to be, unfortunately, out for the rest of his season, it sounds like. And, uh, boy, that's a, it's sad and unfortunate there. Uh, but uh, so Dylan Duff is going to be out for the rest of the year. He suffered the injury against uh, uh, Hugoden in the uh, Sterling Invitational semifinals on Friday night last week. So that's a big loss there. A couple of seniors out of the lineup tonight. Nolan had been averaging five points through the first uh, seven games of the year that he has played. Or six games, I should say, that he has played. Uh, I was right the first time, seven. It's Friday night, and my math is not the best, but you get the idea there. But uh, anyways, uh, Scott City trying to Get going here and complete a doubleheader sweep here uh, tonight. And uh, taking a look at Cimarron, they uh, went two, one and two at the St. John uh, tournament, and they would lose to Sunrise Christian 65-27 and then beat Chase. This is not a typo. They would beat them 75-3. to That's right, 75-3. to in a consolation match and then would lose to Maxville, the Mustangs, on Saturday in the fifth place game, 53-50. Uh, they're 3-8 and eight on the year, 0-1 oh in GWAC play. Their wins come against Attica, St. John, and Chase. They're led this year by Trace Copper, who had 21 points in the first meeting between the two teams and had a bulk of those, I think 17 of those in the first half as... 
And he has uh, got 13 of their 36. He averages over a third. Then they also go with Miguel Ramirez, another junior as well. He has another nine points per ball game, nine and a half points per ball game as well. And so that's uh, about the, over well over half their points goes to those uh, two uh, juniors. Uh, Heddleston averages four and a half. Uh, Briggs averages three, Mendez three a game, so it's a team that's not a high scoring team. They lost to Scott City first meeting out 51 to 47 uh, back on the 12th of December. Cimarron led that for most of the way and then Scott City took that lead with that three point play on that dunk by Sage Steckline. And Scott City never surrendered the lead after that and they're hoping to come out to a big lead here tonight. Uh, but. Cimarron and scrappy guard play, and it'll be tough in the guard position. The Beavers have a significant advantage underneath. Jackson Rumford averaging 17 a game. Alex Trango, who had 11 points on Tuesday night, also had 11 against Cimarron. He averages eight a game. And Eloy Ruelas averages seven. Sage Steckline averages 10. And Coy Vance is going to get his first uh, career start here tonight uh, for Scott City against Cimarron. And he's been kind of one of those role players that plays about anywhere he's asked and does a good job and has been consistent all season long uh, for the Scott City boys who are trying to get to 8-5 and five on the year and, more importantly, uh, the eighth win and 1-0 uh, and oh in uh, conference play here. So uh, Scott City will be on the road once again. As they did something with the little Beaver uh, brothers there, the young kids uh, introduced them in between the games there. Beaver Brother uh, Basketball Club there and they got a basketball, a Scott City basketball and they got to be in with the uh, team there in the, in the uh, locker room they got to they get to sit behind the bench on the front row behind the team bench so that's a really cool thing there and uh, let's now get to hear coach Brian Gentry's pregame speech as well as we are moments away from getting the starters here introduced here for Scott City and the Cimarron Blue Jays. Let's go ahead and move forward with that. It's your starting lineups once again presented by Security State Bank here in uh, Scott City in Leota Free Bill Pay and Online Banking Safe Secure and Easy to Use member FDIC. For Scott, uh, for Semron, excuse me, they are coached by Chris Chilton. He was assistant for Dodge City for a while. He's in his third season at the helm at Semron. He's 13 and 40 and 2 and 11. And uh, GWAC plays assisted by Todd Hamilton and Samuel Allen. They are three and eight on the year, 0 and one in the conference. It starts with Trace Copper. Copper is a 5'9 junior, averages 13 and a half points and grabs 1.6 boards a game. It'll be Trent Briggs, he is a 5'11 junior who averages three points and 3.2 boards a game. Also Miguel Ramirez, he is a six foot junior. Ramirez averages nine and a half points and 2.8 rebounds a game. Kate Sonday, he is a 6'2 sophomore at two points and two rebounds a game. And it'll be Logan Heddleston. He is a 6'1 sophomore at four and a half points and 3.2 rebounds a game. Trace Copper, Trent Briggs, Logan Heddleston, Miguel Ramirez, and Cade Sonday. For the Scott City Beavers, they are coached by Brian Gentry in his seventh season, 79 and 84. He is 27 and 31 in the league. Assisted by Joey Meyer and Drew Kite, they are 7 and 5 on the year, first league game of the year tonight. Eloy Ruelas, the 5'10 junior at 6.8 points, three rebounds and three assists a game. Sage Steckline, the 6'6 senior at 10 points and nearly five boards a game. Alex Tarango, the 5'10 junior at eight points and 2.3 rebounds a game. Jackson Rumford, the 6'5", junior, 17.3 points, 6.8 boards a game. And Coy Vance with his first career start tonight, the 5'11", senior, at two points and one rebound a game. Eloy Ruella, Sage Steckline, Alex Trango, Jackson Rumford, and Coy Vance. You're five on the floor for Scott City. Those are your starting lineups presented by Security State Bank. On to keys to the game. Presented by State Farm agent Michael Trout. We go with the proven winner when it comes to insurance. They score big with their policy holders. Keys tonight for Scott City. I think you have to work it inside. That's going to be the big key. The second key as well tonight for Scott City is uh, going to be limiting how uh, Cimarron goes downhill. you got to limit the touches for Copper. 
those are your keys of the game. What I was giggling out there a little bit, uh, Coy Vance and his uh, twin brother Cody, they collided there, uh, kind of that jump as they trying to get hyped up for the game there in that spirit line, and uh, Cody hit the deck. Officials tonight, Whitney Blevins, J.W. Finn, and Corey Williams. Scott City in the home white tops with the lighter blue numbers, the letters, darker blue trim, similar on the navy blue tops as they will win the tap, and they'll have the light blue numbers and letters in the white trim. It is Trace Copper with it, guarded by Alex Trang of the Beavers, open up in a man-to-man -man defense. Left wing goes over to Trent Briggs, and now left corner. Driving in, here's Miguel Ramirez on Coy Vance. Pump fakes, now almost fumbled in back up top. Briggs will take it. Simron wants a slower pace. Scott City wants to speed him up. Trace Copper with it, pivot guarded by Alex Tarango. 30 seconds in, no score. Right side with the pass over to Trent Briggs. Back up top to Copper. Copper with it. He'll go to his left. Spin move in the paint. Pulls up with the jumper. Trango hits the deck too strong, and Jackson Rumford grabs the early board for Scott City. Beavers were patient on that defensive possession. Here's Eloy Rell. quickly on the other end, and he drains a right wing three. His 15th of the year. 3 0 Scott City. We've played 50 seconds. So. Ruelas, a 25% three-point shooter, knocks that down. And the Beavers with an early 3-0 lead here in the first minute. On high left, it's Logan Heddleston. Heddleston up top to Copper. He'll go right with the pass to Miguel Ramirez. Ramirez guarded by Vance. He'll drive in on him, loses it. Still loose, and that's going to be stolen away in a turnover. Well, that let, here's Ruelas gets a strip from behind. The teams will trade turnovers. And now it's loose, but picked up. Here's Briggs in transition, left side to Heddleston. Now high to Copper with 6.35 to go first quarter. 3-0, Scott City leads Cimarron with the ball. With it is Copper, uses up a dribble around the screen. Up top it goes to Miguel Ramirez. Ramirez with it will go to his right, guarded by Vance. Now right wing goes over to Heddleston. Correction, that's Trent Briggs. Briggs with the five count on him, now four count. Entry feed, Sande will back in on Steckline. Pump fakes goes up, blocked by Steckline, and then tipped into the hands of Scott City's Eloy Ruelas. Good job that time by the senior stack line. Six minutes to go underneath the run for deflected out of bounds. That'll stay with the Beavers. It's six minutes to go first quarter. They tried to get it in to Rumford. Beavers, Scott City up three to nothing. This is going. This is the 22nd meeting all time. The Beavers have dominated this series, leading 20 to one in this series. Coy Vance will skip it to Rumford out mid post left. Puts it on the floor, and Scott City has back to back turnovers that was stripped out of his hands. In transition, stopping left wing is Miguel Ramirez, now up top to Trace Copper. Lone win in the series for Cimarron came at three years ago, 37-36. Last game of the regular season then. Scott City's won every game since then. That's five in a row. Now Copper pulls up outside the foul line and knocks it down. He has the first basket. Cimarron on the board with 5.27 to go first quarter at 3-2. Alex Trango with it for the Beavers in the backcourt. Scott City's lead at one, now to Coy Vance. Gets it to Sage Steckline, he'll drive in. He'll take it all the way, his layup, oh, it crawls off and the rebound goes to Heddleston. So Steckline, who went scoreless on Tuesday night, misses that one, copper the ball, simmer on the ball, down one. As we go to five minutes to go first half, spin move, Briggs, he'll drive left baseline, now it needs help, finds a cutter, Sunday, and he kisses it off the glass, and Cimarron leads at four to three with 4.57 to go first quarter. Now into the front court, here's Alex Trango with it. Almost gets it poked away. He'll take it all the way. His layup, oh, he left it short. And the rebound to Heddleston. Scott City's missed their last two layups there. They missed him from point blank. And the layup on the other end is good for Briggs. And Cimarron with six in a row. Six to three they lead with 4.38 to go first quarter. And now we get a over and back on Scott City. That's their third turnover. Scott City will bring in Brooks Bailey in. He will replace Coy Vance. So Scott City without Avery Knoll tonight. And Street clothes on the bench due to an injury suffered in practice yesterday. Beth is out indefinitely. And Simron with a 6-0 run leading at 6-3. They are 3 of 5 for the floor, but they've all gotten to the rim that time. And now they're going to the rim again, and they have missed the layup. And the rebound in the hands of Eloy Ruelas for Scott City. Had a good look at it. Steckline with it right wing. Trying to get it into Rumford. Up top of it to go to Eloy Ruelas. Left side to Brooks Bailey off the screen. Here's Alex Trango. A straightaway three for the tie. Oh, that went in and out. But Eloy Ruelas grabs the board for Scott sitting in the other crack. Trango with another try, and he'll bury it. 
Alex Tarango with his 13th triple of the year, and that'll end the 6-0 Cimron run at the 355 mark of the first quarter at 6-6. Six six. Scott Sinney's baskets have come from three-point range. All Cimron's in two-point range. Copper with it. Goes right side to Sande, trying to go around Brumford. Can't. Nice defense, and now cutting in is Copper. The foul line taking the jumper, clutching, rimming in and out for Heddleston, and Sage Steckline collects the second board for Scott City. We're deadlocked to six. Here's Ruelas. Nice dish underneath the run for Pump Fix. He'll kiss it off the glass, and Scott City has the lead back at eight to six or 325 to go. That was great penetration that time by Ruelas, and then dish it off to Rumford, who has his first basket. Eight six, Beaver lead at two. Last five belong to Scott City. 3.15 to go first quarter with the dribble is Briggs up top. Here's Miguel Ramirez with an out top. Copper for downtown. Yes, he has five. It's 20 of three in the year, and it's 9-8. Semron with three minutes to go first quarter. A third lead change, and Jackson Rumford trying to extend or re take the lead for Scott City, and he does. He has the last four, 10-9, 2.55 to go first quarter. Scott City beat the press down in a hurry. 10-9, Scott City leads Cimarron ball, 245 to work first quarter. Trent Briggs with a hill drive in. Gets it stripped by Steckline. It's losing. Here's Alex Trango on the run. Copper's going to poke it away from behind, and Scott City's fourth turnover. you got to feel that pressure if you're the Beaver guards because that's the second time Cimarron has done that to him, and Coach Chris Chilton will burn a 30-second timeout with 236 to go first quarter. 10-9 Scott City lead. Basketball presented by Lone Tree Farms and Livestock, McCarty Family Farms, Metzger Appraisers and Metzger Family Farms, Midwest Mixer. Also, Miller Veterinary Clinic, Norder Supply, New Life Market, Plain Jans, Platinum H Insurance, and Pokey Feeders. So Scott City already with four turnovers in this first quarter. Here with 2.36 to go in the first period. They lead it 10-9, but Simmer on the ball. Turnovers have been an issue here in the last few games for Scott City. They're averaging at around 15 a game. They had that season high 27 against Huguenin, or 25 against Huguenin. As the Blue Jays will sub in Adonis Batman for the first time. Batman, a 6'2 junior. 10-9 your score. You did not play in the first game against Scott City. As Cimarron with the ball out of the timeout. With in the backcourt here is Trent Briggs. Scott City had some pressure, but that pass is almost thrown away. And now the hands of Copper. He's going to weave his way through. Bounce pass to Batman right side. Leaves it short on the right side. But the rebound tipped and picked up by Cimarron's Briggs. They'll have another crack at it in a three in the right wing. No. Rebound sec line was pushed, but they don't let it, they call a foul. They haven't called one yet, but into the hands of Scott City. 205 here in this first quarter. Scott City with a one point leading the ball up top. Here's Alex Tarango with it. Back to Brooks Bailey. He'll skip it in the left corner. Steckline picks it up, drives in one time. Now he'll just take the two. He'll bury the two from 17. And Scott City now with a 12 9 lead with 148 to go first quarter. They've scored nine of the last 12 points of this ball game and have their Lead at three, matching their largest. 100 seconds to go. First period. Copper has five, looking to drive in. Nice backdoor cut. Driving in the layup is good. Trent Briggs with four, and it's now 12 11 with 93 seconds to go. First quarter, and the Beaver lead back down to one. It was a 51 47 affair. First meeting back on the 12th of, or 12th of December. Driving in, here's Trango. Nice dish to Rumford, who puts it up. He has six. 14 to 11, 118 to go. First quarter. Ser uh, still almost seven minutes into this ball game, no fouls either side. Copper walking across right to left here as we see it. Final minute of this first quarter. Copper goes right side of the pass to Trent Briggs. Briggs with a dribble out high. 14-11, Scott City lead under a minute to go. With it now is going to be Miguel Ramirez. Ramirez with it, guarded by Bailey, number 24, guarding number 24. A little push off there, but not enough to warrant a foul. And bounce pass back to Trace Copper. 44 seconds to work here in the first period. 14-11, Scott City leads. Semeron with the ball. Copper still with the dribble. Spin move in the paint. Flips it over right side to Batman. Then goes over, driving in, losing his footing, and now losing the ball, throwing it away right into Bailey's hands. He has the steal, and that's the third Semeron turnover. Scott City with a three-point lead in the ball. And now here's Sluis and a turnover. Fifth turnover in the unforced error and driving in. Stripped that time by... Alex Tarango, a nice recovery play. They'll say it was last touch, though, by Scott City as Coy Vance and Camden Volgamore now in for the first time. That will be Alex Tarango and Sage Steckline with 20.1 to go here in the first. 
It's 14 to 11 for Scott City. Copper to trigger it in underneath the Blue Jay basket. He'll lob it in and almost doesn't get it. Now Copper turns down the three. So he got it from Adonis Batman. He has the ball guarded by Eloy Ruelas. 10 seconds to work first quarter. 14-11, your score for Scott City is Copper sets up the play with five seconds. It's going to be an isolation for Copper. He'll drive right side with two seconds, with one second, and firing a three for the tie, and too strong for Miguel Ramirez as the first quarter comes to an end. The Beavers with a three-point lead heading into the second quarter at 14-11. We'll step aside for one-minute break. This is Beaver Basketball. If you are in the market for a new or used vehicle, check out J&R Car and Truck Center of Scott City. J&R Car and Truck has a fully trained service and parts staff for repairs on most makes and models of vehicles. Locally owned and operated, J&R Car and Truck Center provides new and used vehicles. Stop on in and check out jrcarandtruck.com for your next vehicle. J&R Car and Truck Center, your Chevrolet and GMC dealership in Scott City. Your online form. For more information, go online to buylewis.com where you always get it for less. Scott said he shot a blistering 67% in that first quarter, and that included two misses right around the rim. Cimarron was 5 of 12 for the Beavers' ball to begin the second quarter with a 14-11 lead. Glad to have you back. Scott City led by Jackson Renfer with six. Coy Vance with the ball now for the Beavers. He'll skip it out high, top to Eloy Ruelas, then back to Vance, back to Cam to Volgamore and Drumford in the toward the left block. It has the backdoor feed now. Trying to get it to Bricks Bailey, who saves in a play, but right to Jackson Rumford. Underneath the Volgamore, he'll catch it. He'll put it up, and he'll score it. He has, uh, on the left block, his first basket, 16-11, to 11, with 7.34 to go first half, and Scott City with their largest lead. They're on an 8-3 run over the last three minutes to have a five-point lead. Cimarron out there with Colby Wilson in for the first time, a 5-7 sophomore. His pass somehow kept alive by Briggs. He'll drive it in, and he'll lay it up and score it. He has six. 16-13, 7-15 to go first half. Scott City quickly in the front court with it. It's Coy Vance almost double dribbled. Volgamore right corner up top to Rumford. He'll try a three. That'll be off the heel and the rebound to Cimarron's Trent Briggs. First minute of the second quarter. Beavers up by three. Cimarron with the basketball. That was Rumford's first miss from the field. Scott City now two of four on threes in this first half. Cimarron one of three. And that's the difference in the game. 6.48 to go first half. Wilson with it guarded by Volgamore. Uses screen to get it over left to Briggs. Briggs guarded by Vance. Looking to feed it to Copper. Good defense by Bricks Bailey. Almost a five count. And a bounce pass right into the hands of Eloy Ruelas. And we have our first foul of the bowl game. It took nine minutes and 23 seconds for a foul on either side. And they're going to get Trent Briggs with the game's first foul. I don't know if I've seen a game before where the first foul of the game came in the second quarter. But that's the case here tonight. 6.37 to go first half. Scott City with the ball up by three. It's 16-13. Good defensive stop that last possession. In the front court, now right side, here's Brooks Bailey. Bounce pass into Renford to the right block. Triple team. Ball deflected and tried to get it to Volgamore. It's loose and Cimarron forces tournament number six on Scott City. Here's Copper racing his way. Spin move. Hang. Shoots. Bank shot. No. And the rebound to Jackson Rumford. His second board of the night for Scott City. Lead stays at three with 6.13 to go first half. Ruelas to push it. He'll take it. Nice. Wrap around to Volgamore. His shot is blocked out of there. And the rebound to Copper for Cimarron. 6.04 to go first half. Here's Cimarron with the ball down three. Copper up top. Guarded by Brooks Bailey. It's Alex Trango to check in next out ball. Copper uses up a dribble, finds Trent Briggs. Cimarron wants to slow this pace. Scott City wants to speed him up. Right side to Colby Wilson, guarded by Ruelas with 5.45 to go second quarter. It's 16-13 for Scott City. Ramirez with it. We've had one tie and four lead changes. He sees an alley, drives left, flips a tough shot up. No, and Jackson Rumford with three rebounds in the half. And now to Rumford from Ruelas. He'll take it across left to right. Will the junior Jackson Rumford to Coy Vance. Right corner to Camden Volgamore with 5.25 to go into Rumford. Holds it. Now he's looking for a cutter. He'll put it on the floor. He'll drive to his left. 
Kicks it out high to Eloy Ruelas for a deep three. Yes! Ruelas with two threes, and Scott said with the largest lead at a half a dozen with 5-11 to go third quarter at 19-13. Ruelas with two threes tonight. Scott City with four. Make that three in the half. That was from college range for the junior. Pass almost stolen away, but here's Sande. Left wing with the pass to Trent Briggs. 4.55 to work first half. 19-13 Scott City leads Cimarron Blue Jay ball. Trace Copper with it, guarded by Brooks Bailey. Looking to pivot, he'll drive in, spin, move in the paint. His floater up, partially blocked. A lot of contact, no foul called, and Jackson Rumford with the board. Good defense that time by the Beavers on Copper. Here's Eloy Rellis underneath the Volgmore. Here's Bailey with a left wing three. Yes! His first three of the year gives Scott City a nine-point lead. 22-13 with four and a half to go first half. So the Beavers with the last six of the ball game, and they have pushed their lead to nine, just like that, 4.20 to go first half, and a full timeout for Cimarron. The Beavers up by nine, 4.20 to go second quarter at 22.13. We'll step aside for a one-minute break. This is Scott City Basketball. Basketball. At 22 to 13, they've done it with the three ball, working it in and kicking it out for the open shots. And Scott City with four threes in the first half has a nine point lead with 4.15 to go first half. Semron burning their second timeout. Only one foul combined in this first half in the first 12 minutes of this ball game. Miguel Ramirez, he's guarded by Coy Vance, looking to drive and almost walked with it now to Cade Sande. Sande with the dribble up top, goes left side to Miguel Ramirez. Ramirez had eight against Scott City in the first meeting. Trace Copper with it. He's been held to five. He has five of the 13 with 3.50 to go first half. And now they go left corner, and here's a wide open three for Ramirez, and he buries it. His 19th three of the year, and it's 22-16. Simmer on second of the half with 3.40 to go second quarter. Steckline holds it in the front court, or back court, now the front court. Vance underneath the run for catches it. Pump fakes twice. He'll put it up, and he has eight. 24-16, great answer back for Scott City with three and a half to go first half. And Scott City is on an 8-3 to three run over the last two minutes here of this ball game. So we're down to 3.20 to go second quarter. Boy, Cimarron on offense for a long time. Scott City quickly goes back down the other way and answers back. We're down to 3.10 to go first half. Up top with it is Miguel Ramirez. Cimarron is a team. They're 23% on threes this year. Now Ramirez spin move, hangs, shoots, and too strong, but he got his own rebound. Double team goes up. Throws a rainbow shot, but Sande left corner. Here's Wilson for three. Good. Third time the charm there for Semron. 24-19 with 2.51 to go as Wilson with his first three points of the night. Sande with that assist there. They got a couple of looks that time, did the Blue Jays, and they have now trimmed a nine-point deficit to five. Here in the right corner, Tarango for an answer back three. Still strong that time. Rebound fought for underneath. Still loose, and we're going to get a pushing foul on Coy Vance with 2.33 to go second quarter. That'll be Scott City's first foul of the entire half. Both teams just one foul in this entire first half. They've come in this second quarter. So out is gonna be Colby Wilson who just drained that three moments ago. The Beavers with a five point lead but Cimarron back with the ball. They've hit back to back possessions with threes. And they have three now in the half. 
Do 22 to go, second quarter, 24-19. Backdoor cut, deflected, but picked up, though, by Briggs. Right corner, it goes to David or to Miguel Ramirez. He started the little 6-2 to two run here, and now Sande almost walked with it up top. Here is Ramirez, guarded by Vance. 2.05 to go, first half. Driving right side is Briggs. Now back up top to Ramirez. They'll lob it into Sande. Give and go. Drive in. He'll lose it, and he'll lose it out of bounds. He'll put a hand out of bounds, and that'll be turnover number five on Cimarron as Coy Vance exits. Re-entering is going to be Brooks Bailey, who just drained his first three moments ago. And another substitution in. That'll be Mack and Adonis Batman in for Miguel Ramirez here with 1.58 to go in the first half. Scott said he's led by as many as nine. The lead is down to five. Rooks Bailey with it. He'll take it across the 10-second line and then flip it behind him to Jackson Rumford, who leads Scott City with eight. Bailey left corner to Alex Trango with a minute 45 to go first half. Here's a cut. Here's Rumford catching it. He gets stripped going up, and he'll get two free throws. It was going to either Brooks Bailey or Jackson Rumford who were both cutting to the basket. Second team foul, Cimarron this quarter. I believe that'll be on Kate Sande, his first, and it is. Jackson Rumford looking for points 9 and 10. He's 71% the line. And he hits that free throw. He has nine. 25-19, 143 to go first half. The Blue Jays will bring back in Colby Wilson to replace Kate Sande. As in for Scott City for the first time is the six-foot sophomore Avery Radke. who will replace Eloy Ruel as he'll take a quick breather here with a minute 43 to go first half. Second free throw is good for Rumford. He hits them both. First trip to line for either side. He has 10. It's 26-19, 100 seconds to go first half. Scott City stay man to man with it is Colby Wilson up top, guarded by Avery Radke. I think they got it used to each other maybe a little bit in the JV game and the auxiliary gym. Now driving in right down the middle, layup blocked, rebound, flat form. We're going to get a tie up. It'll still stay Cimarron's basketball. They're really letting them play both sides here in this first half. They haven't called a lot of fouls either way. In fact, just three combined. Two on Cimarron, just one Scott City, and all have come in this quarter. Almost played a quarter and a half without a foul call either way. Here's a screen for Copper, and a three is short. Rebound, Jackson Rumford will rip it away for Scott City. He has his fifth board of the half with a minute 15 to go before intermission. Scott City with a seven-point lead in the ball. Rumford with the dribble out high, uses it up, finds it right side to Radke. Now to Alex Tarango. Tarango now up top to Avery, or to uh, Rad, er, here's a three for Tarango. Too strong that time. Rebound. Radke on the backside. And now deflected but right to Jackson Rumford with 55 seconds to go first half. He finds a cutting Tarango. His shot is stuffed that time by Hiddleston. And the rebound into the hands of Simron. The Beavers with another missed opportunity. And they get a pushing foul on Scott City with 49 seconds to go first half. Tarango's first foul. As... Cimarron with the ball. Down 26 to 19. Scott City just cannot separate here from the Blue Jays. 45 seconds to work. They've led for most of this game. Led by as many as nine. And Cimarron with the ball. Spin move here. Backdoor cut. Deflected. Good job getting a hand of the passing. Landed a steal eventually for Scott City. And another foul in the backcourt on Cimarron. That's on Briggs. That'll be his second. And the team's third of the quarter. So the turnover and the foul, the double whammy there on the Blue Jays. And a good job by Alex Tarango getting a hand in the passing lane on the backdoor cut. And Scott City with the ball up by seven, 30 seconds to work first half. He'll take in the front court to Jackson run for now. Roll, pass is thrown away and saved by Radke and then ripped away by the Blue Jays. And that'll be a turnover and a foul. Didn't need to force it there, but had a good idea. 23 seconds to go first half. Good re rotating defense, so on by Cimarron. The foul on Radke is first. Third team foul of the quarter. So both teams have three fouls this quarter. Cimarron's ball up seven. 20 seconds to go before halftime. Neighbor stay man-to-man. -man. Copper will hold it in that center circle. 13 seconds. Now puts on the floor with 11. 10, 9, 8. He'll drive to his left. Spin move. With six seconds, with five, flips it over right side to Wilson with four. His runner up, no, follow up, yes. Scott City did not box out on the backside, and Heddleston makes it 26-21, Beavers at the break. That's a third offensive board by Simmer on this half, and they make Scott City pay on the backside. Halftime show to begin after this three-minute break. Scott City up by five, 26-21. This is Beaver basketball. Ball. For over 80.
welcome to the BBN Halftime Show. I'm Cadence Allen. I'm Jacob Harris, and we are here to evaluate last week's events and events to come. Last week, the Beavers competed in the Sterling Invitational Tournament. The boys team went 1-2, and two, losing to Hugoton by 3 after 2 overtimes. They also lost against Southeast of Saline by 2, ending up with 4th place out of 8 teams. The Beavers had a 38% three-point average and a 47% free throw average. The boys had a better free throw percentage against Southeast of Saline with a percent of 70. The boys made 24 out of the 48 threes they shot against Kingman. Jackson Rumford was awarded the most inspirational player and made the Sterling All-Tournament team. The girls team went 2-1 losing in Smoky Valley by 15 points. During this game, seniors Cheyenne Kramer and Erica Felker scored 17 out of the 37 points. The duo attempted 12 three-pointers and each made three. The girls came home with third place after Smoky Valley who took first and Southeast Saline who took second. Erica also made the Sterling All-Tournament team. On Tuesday, the Beavers took on the Hugoton Eagles. The boys lost with a score of 50 to 37. They had a devastating amount of turnovers, but on a positive note, Alex Tarango had a mind-blowing block towards the end of the game. Jackson Rumford was having a good game, but got pulled in the fourth quarter due to foul trouble. The Beavers had several rebounds, but just couldn't put it in the hoop. The game started out aggressive for the boys. They just fell behind and struggled in the second half. The girls team had a fantastic game winning against the Eagles. In the first half, the Eagles took the lead. Then the Beavers got aggressive and led at halftime, 24 to 18. Cheyenne Kramer took the free throw line for the very first time this year. Megan Trout is an up and coming junior scoring seven out of the 24 points in the first half with 90 seconds left in the game. Both teams got an entire team change. Katie Weathers, a freshman, took the last two points of the game, bringing the final score to 50 to 30. On Tuesday, January 30th, they will travel to Hayes to face the Tigers. And on Friday, February 2nd, they will travel to Cimarron. The wrestling teams had a busy weekend as they traveled to Lexington, Nebraska for a duel on Friday and a tournament on Saturday. The girls team placed seventh with Dayanara Jimenez, weight class 145, taking second, and Ashlyn Pazernick, weight class 155, taking third. The boys took fifth as a team with Houston Frank taking first. Frank is also the number one seed in the 175 pound weight class for the state of Kansas. Tanner Gooden, weight class 215, placed third, and Trenton Frank, weight class 106, took third. Dakota Hayes is the head wrestling coach. For the Beavers, he explains the benefits of going to a different state to wrestle. Obviously, some of the benefits is um, making the trip up there. I mean, it, it's a long trip, it's a long weekend, but. Um, we get to see a lot of comp out of state competition. Um, you know, our girls got to see Grand Island and Wood River, and they usually have some pretty good, um, pretty good wrestlers. But uh, on the boys' side, I mean, we're, we're competing against top tier teams, um, like we do at Garden City. I mean, uh, on the boys' side, we went up against Millard South, which is a phenomenal team. Uh, North Platte's always tough. Beatrice, Bennington. I mean. Um, so seeing that, that high level of competition uh, really shows where we're at um, and where we need to be. Um, but to be able to, to go up there and wrestle those matches and, and know that they don't have any really, if you lose, doesn't have any repercussions on regional seeding or anything because chances are a lot of the teams that are out of regionals haven't seen those teams either. And so... Um, that's always always good to see. They fought hard even with the high levels of competition the team faced. I feel like we wrestled really tough. Um, boys ended up fifth. Um, just I mean, heck, 15 points out of out of uh, second place. Um, you know, and, and Millard South they ended up winning it. But um, girls on the girls side, I think they finished seventh, um, and it was a really tight team race from third to eighth, and so. Um, for them to, to step in and compete at a high level, it's always beneficial to see that, and it's really nice to, to see. So, Thanks, Coach Hayes. On Thursday, the wrestlers will travel to Garden City to face the Buffaloes head-on in a duel. Then, on Friday, varsity wrestlers will be in Garden City for a two-day tournament. 
JV will take a trip to Larned on Saturday to participate in their tournament. Staying busy here in Beaver Nation with basketball and wrestling in full swing. We wish them good luck on their up and coming events. For BBN, I'm Jacob Harris. And I'm Cadence Allen. We believe investing in our community is how we make a lasting impact. It's about more than just providing wireless services. We believe in rolling up our sleeves and working side by side with local organizations. Whether you're sharing cherished moments, staying updated on trends, or exploring your surroundings. We're there to keep you connected. Next Tech Wireless. We are Kansas. BBN is supported by Norder Supply. Lone Tree Farms, Pioneer Communications, Beaver Booster Club, White's Food Liner, Scott City Eye Center, Shells, Flowers and More, Scott City Pharmacy, Giftologists. The dedicated team at Norder Supply is passionate about assisting our customers in achieving maximum net return per acre. That is how we define our success. Through unparalleled agronomic advice and best-in-class customer service, you can depend on us to do what is best for your operation. Ask them today about their spot-on service and how it can fill your needs. Norder Supply. Plain talk, exceptional results. They said this place was too isolated to call home. They said it was too remote to build a community. And then one day, a farmer strung a copper wire from one fence post to another and changed everything. We didn't build the communities of Southwest Kansas. No, we just brought them together. Sports have this amazing way of making a positive impact in our community, whether it's helping children, boosting local economies, or creating role models. That's our goal at American Implement, too. We believe in being a part of the communities we serve by just being a good neighbor. Thanks for being ours. Scott City as they lead the Cimarron Blue Jays here. Uh, first half shooting, Cimarron was 9 of 22. Uh, they were... About 37%, three of five on three, six of 17 on twos in the first half. They did not go to the foul line at all. No free throws in the first half. In fact, Scott City only went there twice, and they hit both of those. Uh, for the Beavers, they were 10 of 18 for 52% in that first half. Nine or Four of eight on threes, six of 10 on twos, and a perfect two for two from the line. Scott City's led by Jackson Rumford's 10, and six for Eloy Ruelas. Uh, Trace Copper, or correction, Trent Briggs with six, and Trace Copper of five for the Beavers. Scott City will be on the road three consecutive games. They go to Hayes on Tuesday, Ulysses next Friday, and then Lakin on the sixth, and then they'll host homecoming, a winter homecoming with the Holcomb Longhorns. Just uh, one other score in that first half. Uh, that I have seen so far in the boys. It was a 40 to 20 lead for Goodland over the Russell Broncos at the break. I uh, don't, uh, the Colby and uh, Holcomb are currently underway. Don't have an update on that one. And uh, Ulysses and Hugerton underway as well down at Ulysses tonight. So we're moments away from the second half. Let's see if the Beavers can clean up some of their mistakes here. They've played decent defense for the most part in this first half and you got to think that maybe the backside board and the putback for Cimarron right before the half maybe drew a little bit of the ire for Coach uh, uh, Gentry. It'll be Scott City's ball to begin the third quarter. Only one player in foul trouble. That was Trent Briggs. He had two fouls. And a, and a half that had a very minimal amount of fouls called. Both teams with only three fouls all came in the second quarter. The first foul didn't come until about the four-and-a-half-minute mark of the second quarter. Uh, and that was on Cimarron. So uh, we haven't, don't know, the issue here at the scores table here. The 
official looking things over here. We have on the floor for Scott City, Sage Steckline, Eloy Ruelas, Alex Tarango, Coy Vance, and Jackson Rumford. We actually have a technical foul. Sounds like it's going to be assessed to uh, Cimarron. Nope. I, okay, I made that up. I think. I think. Because they had Jackson Rumford at the foul line. I think it should be Scott City's ball to begin the third quarter. Okay, maybe we do. For Cimarron, it's Trace Copper, Trent Briggs, Logan Heddleston, Miguel Ramirez, and Cade Sande. So, we have a technical foul to begin the third quarter. And Jackson Rumford at the line. Oh, he's too strong on the first one. So he's now two of three, but Scott City will also get the ball to begin the third quarter, and Rumford hits that second one. He's now got 11. It's 27-21. There's eight minutes on the clock. There must have been two technicals on Cimarron, and Rumford with another free throw. Make it 28-21. to He has a dozen. And good practice here because there's already two team fouls on this. One was charged to Adonis Batman. That was his first. There's already two fouls on the board for Cimarron here. So Rumford hits three out of four, and the Beavers with an eight-point lead to begin the second half. And Rumford turns down the three. He'll drive in, spin move, kicks it up tall. He's going to be called for the walk, and that'll be turnover number eight on Scott City. But they get three points out of it. With 7.50 to go third quarter, and it's 29-21 late. The Beavers have led by as many as nine in this game at 22-13, but they lead at 29-21. There are two technicals on Simron. Now bounce pass is going to be thrown away in a miscommunication by the Blue Jays, and that is turnover number seven on Simron. So both teams with an official possession and a turnover to begin this third quarter. And Scott City with the ball up eight. Up top to Sage Steckline. He'll lob it to Rumford to the foul line. Holds it. Looking for the backdoor cutter. He goes left to Steckline instead. Gets a screen. He'll go to the paint. Pulls up for the jumper. Knocks it down. He has four. And it's a 10-point game. 31-21 with 7.20 to go here in the third quarter. So Scott City with the first five points here in the second half. And uh, left side, it goes over to Logan Heddleston. Up top off the screen, it's going to be Miguel Ramirez. Goes left with the pass over to Trent Briggs. Briggs gets a screen, drives in nice underneath backdoor feet. Shot might have been partially blocked there on Heddleston. Shot by Steckline. Rebound. Here's Elor Ellis driving in. He gets stuff going up, and then that's going to be last touch by Scott City as Roy Ruelas attacked the basket. And it'll still stay Scott City's, or correction, go to Cimarron. With 6.45 to go, that was bizarre. I don't have uh, any clue what the technicals were for unless something was said or done out of the locker room by Simron, the officials caught, and that is going to be a reach-in foul. I don't know if they're going to get a push on Coy Vance. That'll be a second. First of the quarter on Scott City, but they have two fouls on the board for Simron, two technicals, and Rumford went three of four at the line. He's been the only player both sides tonight that has been at the foul line. He's five of six there and has a game-high 13. Another double-figure scoring game for him. Lob up top, goes to Trent Briggs. Spin move, oh, he lost his footing, but kept the dribble. And then nice job by Coy Vance, knocking it off the leg of a Blue Jay. Here's a steal, Vance with it. Lobs it backside, trying to get it to Tarango, and then stripped out of there. Lewis picked up by Tarango, and then he'll say last touch by Cimarron. It'll be Scott City's ball here with 6.21 to go third quarter. 31-21, Scott City. The Beavers with the first five points of the half. They'll get it in to Trango. Up top to Coy Vance. Here's flashing to the foul line. Jackson Rumford just takes the shot, and it's off the back iron and over the backboard. I'm surprised they didn't <coughs> say anything or stop play, but here's Cimarron back the other way with Briggs. Now left side, turning down the three were the Blue Jays. Up top, here's Copper looking to drive in. He's cut off. Now pulls up toward the right elbow, looking for a cutter, and eventually feeds it to Briggs. Now to Heddleston up top to Copper of 555 here in the third. 
5-0 run to begin this half for Scott City. It's 31-21. Copper will reset it. He'll go to his right. Looks for the backdoor cut. It's not there. And now up top to Miguel Ramirez with 5:41 here in the third stanza. 31-21 is your score. Still trying to get confirmation on those two tees. On Cimarron. And underneath the shot, no. Rebound deflected, picked up by Coy Vance. For Scott City, his first board of the night. A lot of contact to let it play through that. And Scott City with the ball, 518 mark. Into run for low, but it's going to be a kick ball. And it'll still stay or Beaver basketball as Coy Vance exit. And one person asked, oh, is it maybe dunking out of the break? But I did not notice Cimarron warming up. So I have officials trying to settle things down there a little frustration there between a couple of uh, players, a Beaver and a Blue Jay. Now inbound into Rumford up top to Brooks Bailey. Up top to Tarango. He'll go right side to Ruelas for his hat trick of threes. That one crawls off Rumford up. He's going to get called for the foul over the back of the push. That will be his first sim or Scott City's second foul of the quarter with 5.07 to go third period. 5 minutes here in the third. Scott City 31, Cimarron 21. We've been stuck there for two minutes here in this game. Driving in and going down here was Briggs. He loses it, and then loses it. Tried to save it in play. Here's a turnover. And then Ruella sweeps away. Bullet pass. Ah, too far from Bricks Bailey and Scott City's ninth turnover. Had the good idea that time, but that time Bailey didn't cut. And maybe just a little bit of a wild pass as well. 447 here in the third. <clears throat> Been kind of sloppy both sides here in the second half. Copper goes to the left to Miguel Ramirez. Ramirez guarded by Alex Tarango. Scott said he's played pretty decent defense for the most part here tonight. Briggs with it up top. I mean, Scott City playing without Avery Knoll. Left side to Copper, guarded by Bricks Bailey. He'll drive in. His layup is good. He has seven as he blows by two Beavers, 31-23. 4.22 to go here in the third quarter. So Bricks Bailey takes in the front court now to Jackson Rumford up top, goes left. And now in the left corner to Alex Tarango, wanting to drive in, doesn't. Up top to Rumford as we are near the midway mark of the second half, third quarter, excuse me. And now up top here, Sage Steckline, head fake. He'll drive in. He'll scoop it up and can't get it to go through contact, but he'll get two free throws. We're at the 4.03 mark of the third quarter. Scott City up by eight. Cimarron, or correction, Scott City with two free throws here with Sage Steckline. The foul on Miguel Ramirez is first. Cimarron's third of the quarter. Steck lines first to two, bounces off to the left. He's 47% at the line this year. Scott City now five of seven tonight. Cimarron has yet to attempt a charity shot. Steck line second, and that one missed, but rebound Jackson Rumford. He's working toward a double-double. Nice cut. Here's Tarango, kisses it off the glass. He has five, 33-23, 3.57 to go third quarter, and Coach Brian Gentry wants a 30-second timeout with 3.56 to go here in the third. A nice rebound by Rumford, and then the dish to Alex Tarango for the assist. Basketball brought to you by Precision Agency and our brothers Auto Body Mechanic, Richards Financial Services, Red and Bean Green Agency. Also, Scott... Uh, City, or Scott County Abstract and Title Company, Scott Cooperative Association, Scott County Hospital, Co Scott County Records, Scott Pro Security State Bank, Sharp Shooting Supply, also Specialty Risk Insurance Agency, Spencer Pest Control, Stevens Veterinary Services, State Farm Insurance, Original Grande, and Trophy Wine and Spirits. Beavers up I-10 yet once again, 33-23 here with 3.53 in period number three. Beavers once again are in action on Tuesday at Hayes at Ulysses on Groundhog Day. And then on the sixth, they head down to Lakin. Out of the 32nd timeout, it's Blue Jay ball. Copper will inbound it. He has seven tonight. Scott said he's going to apply a little full court pressure. Inbound into Trent Briggs. Now to Trace Copper. Copper guarded by Bailey. He weaves his way into the front court. Now he loses it, and there's a steal. And a whistle. And do we get a foul on Copper? That was a late call, his first. 
team's fourth of the third quarter, but a turnover and a foul, and Scott City has an opportunity to extend their lead here at 33-23 with 3.40 to go third quarter. Trago in the backcourt, now he gets it across the 10-second line, uses up a dribble, and then gets it stripped right out of his hands, and Scott City cannot take advantage of a turnover opportunity. Shot blocked by Rumford. Oh, they're going to get a push. That should be – that's a – that's a foul on the floor. That was after the shot, and they're going to give two free throws to Briggs. And the foul was not a, I mean, that was the right call. It was a foul on Rumford, his first or second, team's third of the quarter, but that was a foul on the floor. Instead, they're going to give Briggs two free throws, and he sinks the first one down. Simmer on Oz as a team. They're just 48% at the line. Their first tonight makes it 33 24 with 334 to go third quarter, but Scott City. It's maybe been their own Achilles heel. Haven't been able to feast off a of, uh, Cimarron turnover as much tonight. Second free throw is good as well, and it's 33-25. The Cimarron deficit is now eight as they apply some pressure in the backcourt. Sande guards Rumford. They work for a trap and ball deflected and a back-to-back -back turnovers. Driving in, here's a layup, and that's high up the glass. No, that's a late whistle and a pushing foul on who? On Scott City, good grief. They're going to get Jackson Rumford with another foul. That is his third. A 3.22 to go third quarter. All of a sudden, Scott City with four fouls and Rumford with three fouls in this quarter. I don't agree with that one, and that sends Briggs back to the line for two. First free throw is going to be in and out, and Sage Steckline is going to check in here for Jackson Rumford as he has 13 points and now three fouls and eight boards unofficially. Boy, that was a very questionable foul on uh, run for that last one. As officials said, that was a push. Still an eight point game, but Scott City just cannot separate themselves and turnovers have been their Achilles heel again tonight. Second free throw too strong and the wrong rebound out to uh, Eloy Ruelas for Scott City. So the Blue Jays miss both free throws and no damage done and then a whistle. Oh my goodness. They're gonna get a moving screen out high on Sage Steckline and that's his first, team's fifth of the quarter. After both teams combined for six fouls in the third quarter, both teams have combined for nine fouls in the third with 3.13 to go in the third. That was not a moving screen. The Cimarron player just hooked Steckline there, and that's how the official saw the moving screen. Three minutes to go third quarter. I don't agree with that call. Up top with it is Trent Briggs. They've let him play, and all of a sudden they're tightening things up here in this third. 2.50 to go in the third. Briggs uses up a dribble, finds Copper up top. You don't want to send him to the foul line. And then a whistle and a push, and they will. That'll be on Brooks Bailey, his first, and two free throws coming up, and Simron with another opportunity to go to the foul line here with two free throws. Copper with seven points tonight. He is a 59% free throw shooter on the year. Coming in at 16 to 27. 2.44 to go in the third. Free throw up, and that is good. He has eight. 33 26. 2.44 to go third quarter. Same time, Scott said he has to quit turning the ball over. That's left the door open for the Blue Jays. That second free throw short. We got a whistle and a foul. Or nope, correction, a lane violation. And Scott City, or set correction. Semron's going to get another free throw. Who do they, who's the lane violation on? It was on Scott City there. Honestly, I did not see anything. Wow. Tough break again for the Beavers here, and Copper trying to make Scott City pay. And everybody stays, and it's now 30, or should be 33, 28, or 27. Everybody thinks it was uh, a dead ball situation or a foul. Inbound in here with 224 to go, or 244 to go third quarter, and Cimarron has scored the last four in the game, and Beavers are going to turn it over again, and a layup is good, and it's 33, 29. 6 0 run, and Brian Gentry has seen enough and burns a full timeout. It's a four point game with 2.32 to go, third quarter. Back in a minute, this is Beaver basketball. basketball. 
Spuds Fishing and Hunting Supplies in Scott City has a little bit of everything for everyone. View their lineup of stocked ammo. Inside Spuds is a lasering service where they can laser about anything including glass, wood, and metal. Personalized lasering can enhance your gift for that special someone. Don't forget about their great selection of quality fishing supplies before you head out to the lake. There's plenty more to see inside Spuds Fishing and Hunting Supplies. 323 South Main Street, Scott City, open 8 a.m. 6 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. When you want plain talk with exceptional results, count on Norner Supply to serve you. With over 40 years of experience in the crop protection business, the dedicated team in Norner Supply is passionate about assisting you in achieving maximum net return per acre by delivering unparalleled agronomic advice and best in customer service. That's how they define success. To serve you better, they have an aerial application service and do it all for a very competitive rate. Call them today at 620-872-3058. Norner Supply, plain talk, exceptional results. Scott City's turnovers have allowed Cimarron to get back to within four. The Blue Jays are on a 6-0 run over the last minute, and they pulled to within 33-29 with two and a half to go third quarter. Out of the timeout of Scott City, it's Scott City basketball. It bounced past the Sage Deckline in the front court. Holds it, now finds Alex Terenga. Right corner to Camden Volgamore. Jackson Rumford on the bench with three fouls. Steckline with it up top, now goes to Eloy Ruelas. Cimarron in man-to-man. -man. Right side to Volgamore here with 2.10 to go. Third quarter up top to Terango. Left side to Eloy Ruelas. Scott City needs an answer, needs one here in a good possession. They have had way too many turnovers and some just not good passes. Now they get Sage Steckline right baseline. His jumper, no. Rebound Cimarron, loses it. And it saved it. Oh, play. Just let that go out of bounds. And in the hands, it goes to Briggs. 33-29, the Blue Jays on a 6-0 run. And now going downhill is Briggs. Copper, left side three. Good. 9-0 run, 33-32 with 1.39 to go. He has seven in the quarter and 12 for the game. And it's a 9-0 Blue Jay run. 33-32. With it is now Steckline drives right side, puts up the shot, and that one goes in. He has six, 35-32, and Scott City finally with the basket with 122 to go third quarter. Copper with it, spin move, goes to his right, good defense, and they're going to call a blocking foul on Tarango. That'll be his second, and the team's seventh of the quarter. Simron just four, and that included the two technicals to begin the third quarter. So Trango with two fouls and two free throws coming up for Copper, who's come up big in this quarter. Seven of their points in the third quarter, seven of their 11, and he's back at the line, and he hits the first. 35-32. Or it's a 11-2 two run for Semron here. 117 to go is back in is going to be Jackson Rumford. Coy Vance also in there. Brooks Bailey, Camden Volgamore exit, but Scott City is now down 30, or up 35, 33, excuse me. It is a 10 to two run, and second free throw short, and Cimarron got the board off a deflection, and they have a chance to tie it or take the lead with a three. Here's Copper driving in, and we're, there, he missed the layup. Rumford with the rebound for Scott City, and a big break for the Beavers there. Minute to go here in this third quarter. Scott City's 10-point lead is down to two once again. 35-33, a 10-2 run over the last couple minutes. Entry feed into Renford, has a good position. He's immediately triple teamed and then loses the ball in a turnover. He gets it stripped out of there. Simron with the ball down two. Here's Copper driving right side with 40 seconds to work third quarter. Now he needs help. Bounce pass, driving in, pump it. Oh, that's a double dribble and a turnover, or a turnover traveling. And back over goes to Scott City with 36.7 to go third period. 35-33, Scott City hanging on to a two-point lead in the ball. Bounce pass, it goes to Alex Tarango. Tarango into the front court. Now to Eloy Rello, stops it, pops a right wing three. Can he get in there? No. Rebound, Jackson Rumford. Gets hammered now. Tarango will go up high off the glass. No, that time he'll miss it. And Copper with the board. Oh, they missed two opportunities that time with 15 seconds to go here in the third quarter. And a three misses everything. And that'll go out of bounds. That was put up by Copper. It'll belong to Scott City. He's back in. It's Colby Wilson. He'll replace Kate Sonday. Down to eight seconds, seven, six seconds here in the third quarter. Here's Ruelas with it up top. Flips it up top to Rumford. He'll try a three. Oh, no, rebound loose. Picked up by Steckline. That won't count if, after he got the rebound. And that's in your third quarter. Scott City 
See Cimarron goes on a 10-2 run over the final three and a half minutes of the third quarter, and we have ourselves a game. 35-33 or after three. Back in the minute for the fourth, this is Beaver basketball. Ball. You know, nothing's better than homemade food. That's what you're going to get at Mom and Pop's Burger Stop, located in Scott City. What makes Mom and Pop's Burger Stop so good? They There's nothing more spacious than Western Kansas, and nobody closer than our communities. We are determined to keep our communities connected to schools, kids to teachers and parents. We believe a connected world is a better place. We're more than what we do for our hometowns. It's what we do with our hometowns. s and is proud to be your family. Your Scott City had a 10-point lead on a couple of occasions. Semron on the final three and a half minutes got to the line a little bit more, and they cut into the deficit. It's 35-33, but Scott City will get the ball to begin the fourth quarter. No team's leading scores with 13 points. Trace Copper for Semron, 13. Trent Briggs with 10. Jackson Rumford with 13 points to lead Scott City as he has the ball right side here, trying to get into the stack line. Back in his way and back side here's Tarango, puts it off the glass, and he has seven. Nice ball movement by Scott City, 37-33, 7.40 to go in this one. They needed that basket. Semeron went on a 12 or 10 to 2 run over the final three and a half minutes of that third quarter. Now driving in, losing him and picking him back up. And then stripped that time by Coy Vance, and then he gets pushed by Trent Briggs. His third foul was 7.30 to go. Team's first of the fourth quarter and their 10th turnover in the process. Scott City is not taking care of the ball at times in this game. They have 13 turnovers tonight, and that's what's helped Cimarron mount a comeback to within two on a couple of occasions. It's right now at four as Eloy Rellis needs help to avoid a five count, trying to lob it in, and he turns the ball over and forces it. 14th turnover for Scott City. Nobody could get open, and Semron with the ball back down four, 7.15 to go. Right side to Miguel Ramirez, uses dribble up top, ball deflected by Ruelas. He's got the steal. He's going to take it all the way. Pump fakes. Goes up, tough shot, no, rebound, loose. And Semron has it, and Scott City still cannot get any points off of turnovers. 6.58 to go, and the Beavers with a four-point lead still at 37-33. Here's Copper with it, stops. Briggs left side. Up top of the go to Miguel Ramirez. He has one three in the game, as does Colby Wilson, who has the ball guarded by Rumford, a little mismatch. 6.41 to go, long ways to go in this one. Ramirez with it, 37-33. Blue Jays with the ball down four. Right side to Copper, guarded by Trango, looking for his screen. He's got City there to help. Copper with the dribble, now out high. Here's a deep three, good. Ramirez makes it a one-point game, 37-36, 6.24 to go. He has six points and two threes. On the other end, Renford answers back with his 15th point, 39-36 with 6.17 to go. Scott City beat the full-court press, and Cimarron now on a 13-6 run here, and they've got it to within three. Copper right side, a three for the tie, too strong. Renford has the board for Scott City. He'll take it out with six minutes to go. He's got a double-double unofficially. Break there for the Beavers. Now here's Coy Vance with it. Nice cut, Steckline catches it. He's fouled, trying to go up, and he's got Briggs into foul trouble now with four, with 5.52 to go. Team foul number two of the fourth quarter on the Blue Jays. So Briggs with four fouls now. See what Coach Chris Chilton does. He'll bring in Cade Sunday, but Steckline with two free throws looking to avenge his misses, and he does get one in. 40 to 36 with 5.52 to go. Scott City now six of nine at the line. And uh, Simron five of eight. Steckline gets a soft bounce, he has eight. 41-36, back to a five-point Scott City lead. So they've scored the last four in this game, 5.48 to go. Let's see what the Beavers can do on the defensive end here. If he gets a foul in the fourth quarter, Miguel Ramirez, they work it out high to Heddleston. Backdoor cut, copper reverse layup, yes. He has 15, 41, 38. Trango just was a fingernail away from 
deflecting that pass. He has the ball, five and a half to go. And Ruelas will try a three. Yes! Oh, a big three for Eloy Ruelas. Doubles the lead, 44-38 with 5.20 to go. And Scott City with a big three. There, Ruelas with nine on three triples. 5.10 to go, and Scott City with nine of the first 14 of the fourth quarter. 9-5 run here three minutes into this period. Copper up top, guarded by Alex Tarango. Good defense by Tarango. Now deflected, stolen away by Ruelas. Ruelas is going to try to take this one away. Eurostep, reverse layup, he's got it. What a move by Ruelas with 11. 46-38 with 4.50 to go. And Copper quickly back the other way. Up top they go to Ramirez with 4.44 left in this one. Now Sande at the foul line, pump fake, right corner it goes. Here comes Ramirez, he'll drive in, shot no, a lot of contact. Tarango, lead pass down the floor to Brooks Bailey. He'll drive in his layup, no, but stake line can't get the phone. He's fouled by Hedleston, his first. Good job that time trailing by Steckline after the Bailey miss. And two free throws coming up for Steckline once again here. That foul once again on Hedleston, his first. Team's third of the fourth quarter. And the Beavers all of a sudden are back up by eight with four and a half to go, 46 to 38. Copper a little shaken up after that last play. See, limps around here trying to walk it off. That would be a big blow for Cimarron. He comes in averaging 13 and a half. He had 21 against Scott City in the first meeting and 17 of those in the first half. Steckline's first free throw, good. He has nine. 47-38, his nine points are right now the difference here with four and a half to go. This is a one point game about two minutes ago. And Steckline with 10, he has four points all at the line in the fourth quarter. All of a sudden, Scott City on 11 to two run over the last two minutes. 48-38 with 4.25 to go is with it is Briggs. He stays out there with four fouls, or he's back out there with four fouls. Copper is out of the lineup right now for Cimarron. Up top, it's Colby Wilson with it. Now to Sande, back to Wilson, trying to drive in. Uses up a dribble, good defense by Brooks Bailey. Back to Sande. And we're going to get a full timeout for Coach Chris Chilton. He's trying to buy some time while Trace Copper tries to walk off an ankle injury of 4.11 to go. We'll take a one-minute break. Beavers up 10. This is Scott City Basketball. Hi, this is Rebecca from your local stuff. Scott City Ice Center. 48-38, Scott City leading Cimarron here with 4.11 to go as they still work on the ankle, uh, taping up the ankle for Trace Copper. Cimarron's ball out of the timeout. They're down to two. Uh, Holcomb leads Colby 56-35 to going to the fourth quarter. Saved into play. Good job by Steckline denying the entry feed in the back door cut as we're near the midway point of this fourth quarter. Steckline in the front court now to Ruelas back to Steckline. So the Beavers force another Blue Jay turnover their 14th of the night. Alley hoop. Oh, missed the reverse jam. And the rebound goes to Cimarron. Briggs in there with his four fouls. He grabbed that board for the Blue Jays who trailed by 10 once again. Wilson pass left side driving in. Pump fake going up and no on the shot. Rebound Ruelas. Wants to clear it out, and Scott City's back up by 10 with 3.40 to go. Throws it through to Alex Tarango, who kisses it off the glass for his ninth point, 50 to 38. So that's Scott City's largest lead with three and a half to go as they're on a 13-2 run over the last three minutes. 50-38, now your score. 3.25 left in this one. Right side with it is Miguel Ramirez. He'll drive to the rack and score it. He has eight, five in this quarter, 50 to 40 here with 3.16 to go. Cimarron plays full court pressure, almost get the steal, but good job by Steckline hanging on to it. And now trying on the front court to Eloy Ruelas for a right side three. Yes, he has seven in the quarter. 
and make that eight in the quarter, 14 for the game, 53-40 with three minutes to go. Backdoor cut and layup is good for Miguel Ramirez. He has seven in the quarter and 10 for the game. They have three in double figures, 53-42, 2.50 to go. In transition, here's Steckline with it up top to Jackson Rumford. And left corner, Brooks Bailey for his second three. Yes, he's got it. He now has a new career high with six. 56 to 42, all of a sudden it's a 19-6 run for the Beavers over the last four minutes with two and a half to go. Right wing, it goes over to Ramirez. The Scott City has a little separation now with 2.20 to go. Right baseline to Sande. It was a one-point game with 6.24 to go. A three is short. Rebound, Steckline tipped it, but right trying to get it was Scott City, but back into the hands it goes. Wilson and Sande will lay it up. Miss it, rebound it goes. Here is Alex Trango back the other way. Scott City up by 14, final two minutes. Eloy Arellis, why not? Yes! He has 11 in the quarter, 17 for the game. It's 59-42, a 22-6 run with a minute 54 to go. Scott City in control of this one here now. A 24-9 run in the fourth quarter and a whistle and a foul with a minute 47. It's a first foul on Scott City in this fourth quarter with a minute 47 to go. And Coach Brian Gentry has to maybe get a little bit of a sigh of relief here. It's Scott City with a little separation. That foul on Brooks Bailey, his second. And he'll exit back in as Vance for the Beavers. So Brooks Baylor, the new career high, six points on a couple of threes. His first two threes made this year. Minute 45 to go, and Ruella steps in the passing lane. Lead pass down the floor. Here's Jackson Rumford. He's thinking dunk, and he will, oh, miss the one-handed dunk, but he got his own rebound. He has 15 and tried to get it in, and it's stolen away in a whistle. Why not reach in foul? That might be on Rumford for his fourth. Nope, they're going to get that on uh, Alex Trango instead, his third with 133 to go. Team foul number two of the fourth quarter. But the Beavers with a 17-point lead all of a sudden on a 22-6 run over the last five minutes. And Coach Brian Gentry is going to clear the bench. That one's off a heel of a Beaver. It'll be Blue Jay ball. And we're going to get Brendan Bailey. We're going to get Caston Wren. Also in there, Avery Radke. And welcome to the big show for the first time. We get Reed Felker in there. He's wearing number 42, the freshman. And 41 is also a freshman. That is Junior Mesa with a minute 20 to go. A step back. Looking for Adonis Batman. 59-42. We've got a foul away from the ball. That'll be on Simron, and that'll be on Heddleston, his second. The push. And Simron's 16th turnover of the night. So the Beavers... A little scary for him for a while. And Coach Chris Chilton is also going to empty his own bench. As he'll bring in a whole slew of players. Diego Salto, a sophomore. Also in there, Asher English, a sophomore. Ryan Acton, a senior. 111 ago. Tanner Hamilton, a sophomore. And now Reed Felker to cast and Wren to Brendan Bailey on the left side with a minute to go. Gets a strip, picks it back up, and then trying to feed it, turns it over for the 15th time. In transition, the layup is good. That's for Asher English. 59-44, 48 seconds to go. In the front court, it goes to cast and Wren. Wren with it up top. It goes to Avery Radke, left side to Reed Felker. 35 seconds, Felker looking to drive in, needs help. That finds Radke, now to Brendan Bailey. Steps back, takes a 17-footer off the heel, and the rebound goes to Acton for Cimarron. 25 seconds to go, had a good look, did Brendan Bailey. And now driving right side, underneath the whistle shot, no, and it's a foul on the floor. Third, or make that, yeah, third foul on Scott City this fourth quarter. Reed Felker will get his first foul. So if you can't score and you want to get in the book, commit a foul. And Felker will officially be in the book. Not get to 0, 0.0 rebounds and all the zero stats, you're going to be a trillionaire. Or you get the trillionaire moments. It's points, rebounds, assists, turnovers, fouls. 
steals. Three miss, rebound, here's Brendan Bailey with five seconds, steps back, takes the two, no. Here's Junior Mesa, and now Wren, oh, he'll hit, shoot the three, no, and that's senior ball game. So Caston Wren was close to making his first varsity points, and the Beavers pull away in the fourth quarter. They close out the game on a 22 to eight run over the final six minutes. After the one point lead, it's 59-44, Beavers win it here. They are now eight and five on the year, one and zero in league place. Cimarron three and nine overall, and zero and one in the league competition. Post game to begin after this three-minute break. This is Beaver basketball.